Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I hope everybody's doing well tonight. I see that I've got lots of people in here tonight. And I just wanted to point out I'm doing a couple things different on this live. Uh, one of them is, is that I still have Rob over at Cremedian, who is moderating as an admin in the background of the chat. So um, be aware if you see him pop up on screen, it's just because something went wrong with my power again, which was the issue last live stream. So Luckily, it's not snowing tonight, though. And then the other thing is, if you look on the screen, you can also see a video playing in the background. I want to get some feedback on that. Let everybody, you know, voice their opinion on whether or not they think that's something they'd like to see continue or um, if you think it's too distracting. Eventually, what I'd like to do is have a live stream or a video playing of Kenai. So there's a little Kenai cam going on. So just something to keep in mind as you're going through tonight's live stream with me. But again, I did want to say thank you to everybody who's in here right now. And again, if you uh, pop in late and you want to watch this on a replay, it will be available on YouTube as such. Um, but let's start in with everybody who's here and get some greetings going on. So again, thank you, Rob, for being here. Rob says sitting and waiting. I hope everyone had a good day. I know I did. I hope everyone else did as well. And Robert still, thank you for being here. Robert is coming to us tonight from Maine. And Steve's woodworking. Hey, Steve, how are you doing there? Steve's woodworking in Homestead says here <laughs> and accounted for. And Pauline Parker's here. Pauline says, hi, everyone from Florida. We are having a rain, wind, and possible tornadoes tonight. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we need the rain, but not the tornadoes. I agree. Uh, hopefully you are safe and you don't sustain any damage from those tornadoes and nobody you know does either. And uh, she says, hopefully you are all warm as I know. Yes, hopefully. So I know that right here, it's been a little bit warmer today. Uh, earlier this week, we had temperatures in the single digits, but I think today it was in the 20s. So it's not too bad outside. And thank you for being here tonight, Pauline. And rambling with the brooms. Thank you for being here, Scott. Scott says, howdy, folks. And Scott had a live last night, I believe it was, with Rob. And um, I forget the other lady that was on there. I apologize. Uh, but I'm sure Rob can or Scott can point out who that was. And hopefully everybody goes back and watches their live stream. And Roken Montana, how are you doing tonight? Roken says, hi from Montana. Thank you for being here. And same to you, Kim. Kim Roosh is here from Central Illinois. Thank you. And Haley over from the Hay Meadow is here. She says, waiting patiently in South Australia. Thanks for being here tonight, Haley. And P&J's Homestead Adventures here also says, hello, hello. So excited for another Alone Live. Thank you, P&J. I appreciate that. And we have Big T over at Rustic Log Cabin Life. Hey, y'all. How are you doing tonight, Tony? Hope you're doing good. I saw you have a new video out I need to check out. And we have Jeff in Ohio. Uh, thanks for being here tonight, Jeff. And some salutations going back and forth here. And we have Ed over at Mountain Mariner Off Grid. How are you doing tonight, Ed? Thanks for being here. Hopefully you're back home by now. And Norm is here. Norm says, hi, y'all, from Henrico County, Virginia. Well, thank you for being here tonight, Norm. And same to you, 63 Clocks. 63 says, hello, alone, mods and chat guests. And Happy Chappy Van Life is here. Happy says, yay for us, two times in one week. Yes, fingers crossed that it goes smoothly this time and no more power outages. And again, some more salutations. And Amy Curry is here. And Amy says, hi, everyone, joining from North Dakota. Well, thank you for being here again tonight, Amy. Appreciate it. And Clint, how are you doing tonight? Clint is coming to us from his good old home in uh, East Texas, who says, good evening. And Sean in Alaska, how are you doing tonight, Sean? Sean is in um, Funny River. Sorry, I my brain went to three different places, but Funny River, Alaska. And Sean says, evening alone. Hi, y'all. How are you doing tonight, Sean? Hope you're doing good. And everyone, be sure to check out Sean's channel as well as P&J and Hay Meadow, Curmudgeon, and any other, other channels that are on here. I'm sure they would appreciate that. And Pauline is coming to us tonight, she says, from Stormy, Florida. And let's see here. Robert still says, what is the most snow in 24 hours? Uh, the most snow I've gotten in 24 hours has been four feet. Uh, the night that that storm had happened, I had lit a fire before going to sleep and, uh, you know, camped it down to let it just do its thing overnight. And when I woke up in the morning, <clears throat> excuse me. 
when I woke up in the morning, the snow had actually covered the chimney and snuffed out the fire. Uh, one second, I've got a little bit of a dry spot going on here. And hopefully my straw is not making too much noise. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And we have Lee uh, Batchletter here. Lee says, hello, alone and Kenai. Good evening, everyone watching from Maine. Our second person from Maine tonight. And thank you for being here, Lee. And Susan Gotti, how are you doing tonight, Susan? Susan says, hello, alone. So glad you're feeling better. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Susan. And Hiker Lady says, I like the split screen. You need a Telecaster like John Madden, Lowell, but more Kena, yes. Well, thank you for that, Hiker Lady, and thanks for being here. Um, <laughs> I'll keep that in mind, by the way. And Dee Stu, how are you doing tonight? Dee says, hi, alone. Hope you're well. How many inches of snow do you have now? Are you able to get out and drive? Um, so we had a couple storms last week, again, which lent themselves to the power outages, but when I checked it the other day, yesterday, I think it was, I think I was at uh, just under two feet of snow. No, just under or just over. I can't remember. Uh, maybe about 26 inches is what I had out there. Um, I'm able to get a vehicle in and out of my property, but unfortunately, because of my broken foot, I'm not able to drive at this moment. So not going anywhere, just sitting home and doing my thing. And we have 1968 Alaskan Sourdough. How are you doing tonight? Uh, Sourdough says, happy Saturday. Hope all is well. Be sure to check out Sourdough's channel as well. He's been posting a lot of videos lately. And Donna Heaton, how are you doing tonight? Donna says, hello, all sending blessings to all uh, Pacific Northwest, cold and frosty tonight. Yikes. Well, at least, at least you're home and safe tonight, Donna. And Big T is saying, hey, uh, I finally, I made it finally. I'm so glad you're here tonight, Big T. And some more salutations. And Byron Piles says, hi, alone. I asked you about Saturday night and you did it. Uh, you did it just for me. <laughs> Great to see you. Great to see you too, Byron. So glad you could make it here tonight. And Billy Sutton, same to you, who says hi, alone, and hi, everyone. And uh, Rob is saying that that was Glinda who was on Rambling with the Brooms live stream with Rob last night. And Ray's in Alaska. How are you doing tonight? Ray says, 20s isn't bad for this time of the year. How many inches of snow do you have? As I mentioned uh, just a moment ago, about 26, I believe. And I think we're supposed to get more snow on Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember. Uh, well, today's Saturday, so maybe tomorrow we're supposed to get more snow. And Mr. Mike Lambert is here. And Mike says hello again alone from remote north of Talkeetna. Well, thank you for being here, Mike. Greatly appreciated. And Captain Walker 27 says checking in from New York uh, post deer season with a freezer full. Congratulations. That is awesome. Yeah, I know the hunting season here this year was tough for a lot of people. So it's always nice when you hear that other people are, are having success with their hunts. And Michelle uh, Bode is here, who says, hello from Idaho. So cold here. Yikes. Uh, hopefully, you're not getting too much snow with that cold uh, so that you're able to get out and about, Michelle. But um, like I said earlier to uh, the other person was, I'm glad that you're safe and home and warm tonight. And Ernie's cabin is here, who says, season's greetings to everyone. Thank you, Ernie, for being here. And thank you for that. And yes, before I forget, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and season's greetings to everyone. I hope everyone has a happy holiday season this year and that you get everything that you want for Christmas. And Happy Chappie says, how are you doing alone? I am doing well. Uh, trying to stay busy, but it, mainly it's taken me a long time because I'm hobbling around a lot uh, due to my broken foot. But other than that, I'm doing just great. So thanks for asking, Happy. And Scott is here. And Scott says, hola from Rogue River, Oregon. I'm not familiar with Rogue River. I'm going to have to look that up. But thank you for being here tonight, Scott. Glad you could make it. And some more salutations. And AK Dog Mom 3 says hello from Pennsylvania. Well, hello, AK Dog Mom. Thank you for being here. Clint says, believe it or not, we got another zero inches of snow today. Woo! You're just swimming in it over there. <laughs> and Rob has put up the link to P&J's Homestead Adventure. So be sure to check them out. And thank you for doing that, Rob. Lee is reminding everyone to hit that likes or that thumbs up button. And I do appreciate that. That means a lot to me. It does help the algorithm to help promote my channel and these live streams. And Ed says, still at work, 
bobbing around on the Port Etches buoy at Hitchinbrook Island. No. How's the weather down there, Ed? It, like I said, no snow here in the last couple of days at least. So hopefully you're not experiencing any storms right now, nor rain. And um, P&J is thanking Rob for posting the link. And there's Sean in Alaska's link. So be sure to pay Sean a visit also. And there's Monica Lynn, Alaska My Heart. Uh, Monica says, hi, alone in remote Alaska. Thanks for coming in my crazy live eek. So Monica just had a live stream earlier tonight. Um, make sure you go over there and check it out. She just posted a quick live of her uh, holiday parade in her area. So um, very fun to watch. Thank you for doing that, Monica. And thank you for being here. And Bridget Southerly is here. And Bridget says, hello, I'd like to mail Kenai a Christmas package. How do I go about that? If you go to the description of my normal episodes, underneath the episode, uh, you'll see a little header and then if you'll click on the word more and that'll open up a whole page underneath. And underneath that, you can find the ship to address. Right now, um, if you're going to ship me something, send me an email. It's just um, alone at alone in remote Alaska at gmail.com. So again, just my channel name at gmail.com and send me the tracking so I know to be on the lookout for it. Because if I don't make it to the post office every couple of weeks and your thing comes in the day after I make it there and I don't get back in two weeks time, they'll ship it back to you. And I don't want that to happen. So just give me a heads up and I'll try to make arrangements to get to the post office. So thank you for that, Bridget. And thank you for being here tonight. 63 says that it's 62 degrees in Nashville today. That sounds balmy compared to what everyone else is talking about tonight. And Lynn Thompson, thank you for being here. Lynn says hello from Northern Illinois, up on the Wisconsin-Illinois uh, borderline. Well, thank you, Lynn, for being here. Hope you're doing well and more salutations going on here. And we have Colorado Pack Rat Prepper in the house. And uh, she says, howdy, y'all. Howdy, Pack Rat. How are you doing tonight? And Mariner is saying to Clint, zero inches, huh? Lol. I agree. He's just got so much snow, he doesn't know what to do with it. And let's see here. Uh -huh. P&J says, oopsie, spelling error. That happens to the best of us. <laughs> M. Bristow, how are you doing tonight? M. says, glad to see you alone from Southern Car South Carolina. Woo, my tongue is getting ahead of my brain there. And Susan Marr says, hello, alone. Hello, Susan. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for being here. And there is Ed's channel link over at Mountain Mariner Off Grid Alaska. Be sure to pay Ed a visit and see what he's got going on up at his place. Billy Sutton says, hi, Clint. We have that too, lol. Billy with no snow. And Steve's Woodworking says, have fun, everybody. Off to watch a movie. Well, thanks for popping in, Steve. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. And make sure everyone pays Steve a visit um, when you have a moment also. Amy says, hi, Rob. I plan to rewatch your guest cabin video. Too many interruptions, and I want to see all the details. They look great. I need to still watch that video, Rob. I have to admit, I'm a little bit behind, but I will get over there and check that out. And Rustic Log Cabin Life says, is this the third winter for you? You're doing great. Not a chichi chichaco anymore. Well, thank you. So if you're not familiar with the term chichaco, it is a newbie to Alaska, somebody who's still learning the ropes and uh, basically doesn't have their sea legs underneath them, so to speak. Um, and yes, Tony, this is going to be my third winter. Um, and thank you for that. I do appreciate it. It means a lot to me coming to from somebody who has been here as many years as you have been. And we have Philip Greger here and Philip says, hello alone. Hello, Philip. And thanks for popping in tonight. And there is Big T's channel link for everybody over at the Rustic Log Cabin Life. And I know Big T just posted a video today, too. And Billy says, hi, Monica. Enjoyed the parade earlier. And Ed says, I can't see my snow plow, but my workshop and shower sauna is more than half buried. So far, I've gotten at least four feet of snow. So we're all doing a snow pole contest here. And I think everybody's in consensus that Ed is definitely going to have the most amount of snow. Even if he didn't put up a way to measure it, it'll be visually obvious that he's uh, leaps and bounds above everybody else with the amount of snow that we all appear to be getting so far. And Happy says, how much have you 
gone through your meat haul. Uh, so the meat haul that I did a year ago, I have barely scraped any of that, um, barely made a dent in it. I've given away a few pounds of hamburger and things like that, but it's very slow going. I need to actually can up a lot of it um, before it gets freezer burnt or anything like that. Um, but I did find, I made um, a pot roast essentially using one of the shank steaks. So a cut from one of the legs. And that was phenomenal. That was really, really good. So with the meat that I got from that meat haul, it's been hit and miss. Some of it's been really good and some of it's been uh, kind of flavorless or tough, but the shanks were were fabulous. And I think that has to do with more what there's a bone in it, which always adds more flavor and the marrow in the bone adds to um, or tends to soften up the meat a little bit. And then it has some fat on it as well. So that always helps as well. But thanks for asking. That's a great question. I did also uh, a few months prior to that pick up um, a, a pig, an order of pig as well. And I have probably about half of that left, actually. So again, one more thing that I should be canning up and getting put up on the shelf so that I have a greater uh, life expectancy for all that meat in the freezers. And Scott's life is here. And Scott says, hi, alone. Hi, Scott. Thanks for being here. Scott's another channel that I welcome everybody to go and check out. And Annette Witt, how are you doing tonight? Annette says, good evening, all. Well, good evening to you, Annette. Thanks for popping in. Same to you, Vicki. Vicki says, hello from Colorado. Also watching the Broncos play. It's a warm 38 degrees here tonight. Merry Christmas to y'all. Well, hopefully the Broncos are winning. And Merry Christmas to you too, Vicki. And 63 is saying to Monica, have enjoyed your shorts, uh, beautiful pics. That's awesome. Thanks for going over there and checking out Monica's channel. I know she's trying to grow her channel. So if you're not subscribed to her or to any of these channels, um, I'm sure they would all appreciate it if you subscribed and watched their videos. Ed over at Mountain Mariner says, snow pole, dang, auto, dang you auto correct. <laughs> I didn't miss or I didn't see the earlier one. Uh, Monica says, thanks, Billy. That was a crazy first live for me, lol. Well, you did fantastic. And I'm glad that you were able to post it. Um, while I was watching you, I was trying to mess with my audio. So I couldn't hear anything if you, um, were speaking during that. So I apologize if you said something to me when I popped in and I didn't hear what you said. Uh, but now my audio is working. I moved my computer. So, um, now I'm closer to the wall. I can actually touch the wall behind me. And uh, hopefully that helped with some of the lighting issues that I was having in here earlier as well. So that's why I was messing with the audio. And Susan uh, says, Florida is experiencing a bad tropical storm right now. How far are you from the coast, Susan? Hopefully you're not too close to where the storm is hitting. And Monica is saying that she appreciates that to 63 clocks. And Happy says, how's your renovations going? I removed my toilet today in the camper to make some more room for nighttime washes. <laughs> um, so my renovations are going okay, but they're going a little bit slow right now uh, just because of the fact that I can't go get materials and, um, like I said, hobbling around and what have you. But uh, slowly but surely. So uh, I'm hoping that I can take this boot off in a couple of weeks from now and get back to things. But as it stands right now, um, I'm not really able to do a whole lot. So, and Ed is saying to watch out. There's a bear behind me. Uh, I wish this was a bear skin rug, but it's just a piece of felt. But it sounds like there's a bear sleeping in here because Kina is snoring underneath the desk. So, uh, let's see here. 63 says to Rob over at the Cremedge Inn, great cabin video, enjoyed it, lovely place. So for those of you who are not familiar with Cremedge Inn, which I believe all of you are, but if there's somebody in here watching that isn't in the chat, um, Rob actually purchased one of the properties from Railroad Alaska, and he sits up in Chase, Alaska, and has been renovating the cabins that he purchased over the last couple of years. So uh, definitely worth a watch for sure. And Rob is saying, thank you to 63 clocks. Glad you liked it. And Happy says, we're having steak or marry me chicken tonight for dinner alone. You, uh, We haven't had a dinner together in a while. Well, I'm glad you're getting to have dinner with me, um, even if I can't taste it. But I've seen the recipe for that marry me chicken. 
and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I would love to try it sometime. I know my son made it for his girlfriend. I asked him if he was sending her signals and he, he, he kind of gave me the wink, like maybe <laughs> if I ratted you out, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, 1968 Sourdough says, uh, thank you uh, to Kermudgeon for posting the link and says, very nice vid on the Northern Lights. Enjoyed that so much. Yes, you did a fantastic job on the Northern Lights video, Rob. Um, I don't know how you did it. I don't know what camera you're currently using to film that. When I upgraded my phone, when my last iPhone quit working, the new iPhone will not film it for me. The old one would. The new one keeps telling me I need more light. So we'll see what I can do to get some of those filmed again. Um, but I also need to manage to stay awake that long and I haven't been able to for quite a while. Uh, Patty Rettler is, or Retter, writer, sorry if I'm saying your last name incorrectly, but Patty, I'm glad you're here nonetheless. Thank you for popping into the chat. And Rob over at Curmudgeon is saying, oh my God, I did not get notifications to Monica's live stream. Yeah, I just happened to go into YouTube and that's how I saw it. I didn't get a notification either. Um, so not sure what's going on with that. 63 clock says to sourdough. Yes. Love the Northern lights video too. Very beautiful. I just added the word very, but I know she meant it. <laughs> and Alaska cut the cord says, good evening, everyone from Willow, Alaska. Well, thank you for being here, Adam and Phyllis. Adam and Phyllis are also moderators on my channel. So, um, as of tonight, in case you two didn't know, it, I added you as mods. So thank you for being here. Uh, use your power wisely. <laughs> And Amy is saying to Ed, still eating hardtack and MREs. Are you, Ed? And Joe or John Bogan, how are you doing tonight, John? Thank you for being here. John says hi from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm so glad to see you in the chat tonight, John. And Simple Island Living is here and says, glad you're doing well. Hello from Kamano Island, Washington. Enjoy your live streams. Well, thank you, Simple. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. And Mountain Truth Deed says, can't imagine pups being spoiled. Yep, this one for sure. He is the most spoiled puppy ever. P&J says, hi to Adam and Phyllis. And Bridget says, okay, sounds great. Thank you for that, Bridget, again. Susan says, didn't you close down your P.O. box for the winter? So I made an announcement um, earlier in the season where I said that Officially, yes, it's closed down, or technically, I should say it's closed down. But really, all that means is that I'm just saying I'm not really going to the post office to check the P.O. box. Um, but if you alert me that there is something on the way, I will try to attempt to get there. But I cannot make any guarantees depending upon weather. Um, but I don't, I don't truly close it, close it because it's an annual subscription. It just means that I don't want people sending something and then it going back to you. So that's really what it is, is like in the spring when things start to melt and thaw and I can get there more readily, then I will, you know, tell everyone, yes, I'm back to checking it more often. But right now it's kind of slow and go. Uh, but thanks for asking the clarifying question, because I'm sure some people were like, wait a minute. <laughs> and Patty says, I'm here. I'm here. I'm in North Florida. It's chilly around 67 degrees. I'm hoping to move to Alaska. I need a change. Well, Alaska is a great place for a change for sure. And a lot different than Florida. That is for sure. So come on up. I'm sure Alaska would love to have you. And Ed says, uh, believe it or not, it's windy here, which is similar to Clint's zero inches of snow weather report from Texas. <laughs> well, hopefully it's not too windy. Hopefully it's not about to push you overboard. 55 mile an hour winds. That's that's pretty windy. The winds we had earlier in the week were 35 to 40 mile an hour winds, and those were ridiculous. So I can only imagine how uh, treacherous that is being out there on the water with 55 mile an hour winds. P&J says, we're having a heat wave here in New York State of 40 to 50 degrees. That's pretty warm, actually, for New York, especially this time of the year, I would think. And Susan says, hello to Adam and Phyllis. Monica says, no worries, Rob. It was wild. Not what I was expecting. Speaking of her live stream. And Judy Grimm is here. It says, hi from Wisconsin. Hi, Judy. Thanks for being here. Much appreciated. And there is Monica Lynn's channel link for everybody. So be sure to pay Monica a visit. And again, go back and check out that live stream she did tonight at the holiday parade. And Mountain Truth says, we got more snow in northern uh, New Mexico. Oh, 
my family, I have some family down in New Mexico. Um, and the way they were telling me is like, they have hardly had any snow lately. So it's good to know you're getting some down there. And Copper Penny says, hello, everyone. I'm Copper Penny from Wisconsin. Well, thank you for being here, Copy Copper. Much appreciated. And uh, Alaska cut the cord is saying to Billy, Monica Lynn, Alaska, my heart, and PNJ's Homestead Adventure. Hello. And there is uh, the link to Rob's cabin walkthrough video. So be sure to check that video out. I'll leave that up there for just a moment. And Joe Ann Twist is here. And Joanne says, hello alone. Glad to see you on you're on tonight from upstate New York. Well, thanks for being here again, Joanne. Much appreciated. And PNJ's Homestead Adventure says to hit that like button. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. As I mentioned earlier, that does help for sure. And Monica Lynn says, thanks to Rob for posting the link. And Rob says he cheats. He checks the snow drifts, lol. Yeah, that's, I thought about doing the same thing actually, because I can't really walk out to the snow pole. But then I was like, no, that's cheating for sure. And uh, Ed is saying that Chi Chi Taco is someone who's new to tacos as opposed to Chi Chaco. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Haley says, all this snow talk, and I'm heading to a high of 29 degrees Celsius today, and that's a nice mild summer day. Yeah, well, hopefully just thinking about the snow will keep you nice and cool on that summer's day, Haley. And speaking of Australia, we have onto it Aussie with us tonight. Aussie says, good day alone and everyone. Well, hello, Aussie. Thanks for popping in. And there is Adam and Phyllis's channel link over at Alaska Cut the Cord. Thanks for posting that, Rob. Pay Adam and Phyllis a visit if you want to see a fun time for sure. And let's see here. We got more salutations going on. And we have Panhandle Off-Road Ranch. It says hello from Salina, Kansas. Thanks for being here, Panhandle. Greatly appreciate you popping in. And Kathy Mills says hello alone. Greetings from Canada. Hope you're doing better. Wishing you a happy holidays and wishing you all the best for 2024. Well, the same salutations to you, Kathy. And again, I appreciate you being here tonight with us. And Rebecca says, um, hello alone, made some delicious gumbo. Oh, gumbo. That's one of my favorite meals. I make uh, either gumbo or jambalaya, one or the other, every single week. <laughs> I do love uh, flavorful food and Creole and Cajun food is some of my favorites for sure. Thanks for being here also, by the way, Rebecca, much appreciate it. And there is Onto and Aussie's channel link. Be sure to pay Aussie a visit. I'm sure she would appreciate it. And Monica's asking Clint how it's going. And Ed is saying to Aussie, I can hear that Australian accent in your typing. <laughs> Alaska cut the cord. Uh, it says, Blue says hello to Kenai. I'm sure if Kenai heard him barking, he'd probably perk his ears up. And Rambling with the Broom says, what's up, Balone? What's up, Scott? <laughs> And let's see here. Zane Izo says, after your foot injury, are you rethinking putting a well and a septic so you could have indoor plumbing? I don't think you could outrun a grizzly on your way to that house with that foot in the snow. <clears throat> no, I am not considering putting in um, a well and a septic here. Uh, I've spoken since I've had to ask some of my neighbors to help me, you know, other people in the community to help me recently. And they have told me that their indoor plumbing has frozen as well as mine had done previously. And, you know, they were saying it didn't matter how much insulation they have. Um, they're still dealing with freezing. And part of the issue here is, you know, there's the common perception that if you go four feet below ground, um, it's a constant 40 degrees, maybe in the lower 48. But up here, you go three feet down and you hit permafrost where the ground is, you know, permanently frozen. So um, I'm, I have no plans on reinstalling, um, a, you know, a septic system here or putting in indoor plumbing again. I don't mind hauling in water and I have enough water on hand right now that could last me two months if I, if I was really sparingly with it, as far as drinking water goes and cleaning water, I have enough water to clean with that can take me through the whole winter if I needed to. So I'm not really concerned about that. And I don't actually use my outhouse in the wintertime. I do use it in the summer 
But in the wintertime, I do have a composting toilet inside the cabin. And I can hobble out there if I need to, uh, to dispose of its contents. Sorry, I have an itch on my back. <laughs> and also, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I'm always armed when I go outside. So hopefully I don't run into a bear. Uh, but if I did, hopefully I get a good shot in and protect myself that way. But those are great questions. So thank you for asking that, Zane. I greatly appreciate those. And Monica says, thanks for the shout out. I appreciate that so much. You are so welcome, Monica. And there is Rambling with the Brooms channel link. So pay Scott a visit and tell him alone sent you. And Susan uh, Mar says, right on the coast there in Florida where the storms are. Well, that's not good for where you're at right now in those impending storms. Hopefully you remain safe and you don't have any issues um, with damages or anything like that. So my thoughts are with you and I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you as well. And Happy says, I should have added that I have a camping toilet now instead. Well, that's good. I was I was figuring you you replaced it with something that you didn't just take it out completely. Um, but you never know. <laughs> and Aussie's asking Ed how things are going. Monica says, yes, alone. I live in my life. You said that you were scared, lol. You thought something happened. Uh, so I said to you, well, alone, I'm scared too. It was so loud and crazy. When I first popped into Monica's live, uh, nothing was moving um, on the screen as far as the parade, but I could see flashing lights and a street view. So I assumed that there was some calamity on the street, but it just turned out to be the holiday parade, luckily. So, and Billy Sutton says, hi, Susan, stay safe in that storm. I agree. And uh, Mountain Mariner is saying to Aussie, everything going well here at work uh, would be better at home, though. Yes, I understand that one completely. And there is Rob over at Curmudge Inn's channel link. So be sure to pay Rob a visit. Thank you for putting that up, uh, Adam and Phyllis. And Lee says, alone, I know your son comes up and helps with electrical. Can he help this spring with your countertop? Um, I will be able to actually finish my countertop. Um, I've got some people in the community who said they will come help me put it back on top of the countertop, the butcher block that is, uh, when I get it all finished. Um, <clears throat> I got it down myself, but getting it back up on the countertop without messing things up is going to be a little bit more tricky. So I can finish it, uh, but my son hopefully will be back up this next spring to take care of some of the electrical work that I'd mentioned previously. Right now, the power is cut off to the bunkhouse so that I don't have to worry about any of the faults that are in that power line running to it or any issues uh, with the bunkhouse this winter. So fingers crossed that that goes well next spring as well. Um, Alaska Cut the Cord has put up a channel link uh, featured video. I'm not sure whose video that is, though. Unfortunately, it doesn't say... <laughs> So be sure to check out that featured video, though. It might be Alaska Cut the Cords featured video. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Michelle Bode says, hi, alone. I was hoping you could give us an update on your foot. Is it in a cast? What is the long term? So my foot is not in a hard cast. It's just in a walking boot. Um, you know, one of the ones that you strap on and that you can inflate. Um, so that is doing a fair job of allowing me to get around and have some mobility but I'm still not able to walk on it without the boot on. Uh, when I inflate the boot, it like sucks in against the hill and keeps my foot from moving at all. Um, and I can't, and then forces me to walk on the ball of my foot. So I'm not putting any pressure on the hill itself, but um, I don't know what the long term is. At this moment, I'm going to give it another a um, couple of weeks, maybe two, three weeks. At that point, it will have been about six weeks since the injury first occurred. And if it still is hurting at that moment, then I'm going to go back to the doctor. I don't believe that, it, I, I think there's just a hairline fracture. Um, but on the off chance that there's something more, you know, hopefully they'll be able to remedy it. But I don't believe it's anything that's going to require a plate or screws in to my foot. Fingers crossed again. A lot of finger crossing here tonight. And Monica is saying, uh, Merry Meat Chicken is good. That's what I understand. I understand it's really, really tasty. And Happy says, okay, random question. But when it's winter, I know you do a lot of your renovations usually. 
but does the winter affect you in that you won't, that you want to sleep more? Yeah, it kind of does. Um, I do, I do notice that I wake up with the sun. So right now the sun's coming up around 10 AM in the morning, which means that I'm sleeping in quite late in the day, but I get, you know, I don't, the sun goes down at three 30 in the afternoon. So it's not like I'm going to sleep at three 30 either. I'm still staying up, you know, as late as, you know, sometimes midnight or so. So it does affect me, but I'm not really losing any hours of sleep in the summertime. Um, I do stay up probably even later cause I wake up, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning, but, uh, it's definitely easier to work in the wintertime on the inside of the cabin. That's for sure. And Rob says, um, I custom set my GoPro 11 to film it, uh, which is how he filmed the Aurora Borealis. It is the only thing I can get to do it right. Well, that's good to know. I might have to mess around with my GoPro. I have a GoPro 10. I think it's a 10, a 9 or a 10. I can't remember, but I'll play around with that and see if I can get that to work. And Aussie says, Ed, I'm hearing you. I've been... I've had six weeks off at home, uh, back to work Thursday, not looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that you have to go back to work. I'm sure those six weeks at home were a lot of fun, though, for sure. At least hopefully relaxing, if nothing else. And Mary L is here. And Mary says, hello, I'm late. No worries, Mary. I'm glad you're here. And same to you, Charles. Uh, Charles says, hi, all. I'm so glad you guys could both be here. And D and D from Minnesota's farm. Thank you for being here. I just subscribed to your channel. I decided to pop in and see if you were actually posting videos again. And she is. So this is my friend, Diana, and she just recently purchased a property out in Minnesota and she's been posting some videos. So, uh, quite fun to watch and see your new property and everything that you've got going on there, as well as your, uh, new litter of kittens that you happen to encounter upon arriving at your property. So cute. And Diana says, hi, good to see you back. We just got our garage hooked up to our outdoor boiler. I just watched that video of you uh, hauling wood over to the boiler. Uh, so our barn kitties are happier. We got another light snow here, but we still, but we can still see the ground. I'm okay with that. Yeah, pretty soon you're going to be hauling those, you know, three foot logs over um, in feet and feet of snow, and then you'll be wishing it was like it was today. So uh, again, congratulations on your new property though, Diana. I'm very uh, happy for you guys. And Monica Lynn says, do you bake alone? I have a pretty neat recipe I could send you for cookies. Um, I'm not a huge baker. I have baked some. Um, I bake on occasion, I should say, when the urge strikes. But I have baked in and on top of my wood stove here. So when, when I get a sweet tooth is typically when I'm baking something for sure. So yeah, send me the recipe. I would love uh, to try the cookies for sure. And Lila Wiley is here and she says, hello from Kansas. Hello, Lila. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Aussie says, I tried to join in on Monica's live, but it said it was private. Oh, interesting. That That is interesting. I'm, I wonder if there was a glitch or something that caused that. And uh, Adam and Phyllis are saying good evening to Marielle and to Charles. And AFJ is here. Hello, Arlen. How are you doing tonight? Arlen says, good evening, Miss Alone. It's good to see you. And hello to all in the chat. So glad you could be here with us. Um, Scott is saying, Adam, I'm okay to chat right now. So obviously there's some chatting going on there. Something happening. And uh, let's see here. More salutations going on. Uh, P and J is saying onto it, Aussie, same here, but we watched it after. There you go. That is interesting that you guys got the thing saying it was a private live stream. I'm not sure. The only ones that I've seen are like that is when they make it to members only. So, uh, Pauline Parker says I'm 15 miles east of Cedar Key on the Gulf side. Uh, the storm must be close to entering the state. The wind and rain has picked up tremendously. It's not a tropical storm but tropical storm like, well, hopefully it doesn't get upgraded and hopefully those winds die down before they actually make it inland anywhere. I'm keeping all of you in my thoughts for sure. And Billy is saying to Aussie, Monica's life seemed to go private at the end. Oh, that might be why that makes sense. And Charles says, thanks, Alaska cut the cord. I'm writing from Dover, New Hampshire. What a lovely place to be. And Rob is saying that is a nice area to Pauline. 
And hello, Bren. Bren Free is here. Be sure to check out Bren's channel as well and see all of her metal detecting adventures and everything else she has going on. And Bren says, hello alone. And Bren is also another person from Australia. Uh, D&D's Minnesota Farmer says hi to Aussie and to Kermudge Inn. And there is Aussie's channel link. Thank you, Alaska Cut the Cord, for doing that. And P&J is saying hello to Bren. Aussie says, I'm not a tech person, uh, Monica, so I don't know. There you go. That's how I am. I'm not a tech person either. I, when I moved my computer today, it took me forever to get my monitor to hook back up. And I was like, and I plugged everything back in. I tried multiple HDMI cords, could not get it working. And then finally I realized I had it plugged into uh, the hard drive port and not, or into the motherboard port and not the hard drive. So I had to fix that. Once I switched ports, it worked perfectly, but it took me like 30 minutes. I was so frustrated. I was like, I have a live. I cannot have my, my monitor not working. Uh, but as you can see, all good now. Uh, Rob is saying to Miss Dover at Charles McLevin, um, McElveen, uh, used to go that way, uh, used to go that way a lot when I was a kid. There you go. And Monica says, I, I think I fixed it to public now on her live stream. Bren is asking Clint how things are going. And Billy said to AFJ, I'm in Prattville, Alabama. Are we close? And more salutations here. Uh, Charles is saying nice to Rob. And MT Homestead, how are you doing tonight? MT says hello. Hello to you as well. And Lori Nolan, thank you for being here. Lori is coming to us from Nebraska. And Brent is saying hi to Alaska Cut the Cord. And more salutations between Monica and AFJ. And Lori. And Rob is saying to uh, Charles, he was born and raised in Derry. And Clint is saying, doing good. More salutations. And Rob is asking Bren how she's doing. And there is Bren's channel link for everybody. Thank you, Adam and fellas, for putting that up. Greatly appreciated. And Consuelo, how are you doing tonight? Consuelo says hello or hi from Cleveland, Ohio. I like Alaska. You should come visit. Come visit Alaska or move here even. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people in Alaska who keep telling me, stop telling people to move here. But honestly, Alaska is a beautiful place to both visit and live. So, And Charles says, uh, nice. Went that way a lot to Derry, that is. Uh, father lived in Nashua. And hello, Joe Razor. How are you doing? Joe is coming to us from Alabama. Thank you for being here. And Lynn Pete Young, how are you doing? Lynn says, pray you are feeling better and healing from your fall. I am slowly but surely, but thank you for that. And thanks for being here with us tonight. And P&J says, very warm for this time of the year. Some snowflakes this season, but no accumulation. Yeah, I'm seeing that in a lot of places, actually, where they hardly have any snow. In fact, I think that the winter here so far has been very, very mild. At the beginning of the winter was actually uh, kind of depressing for me because I actually really like snow. And I was like, come on. I just wish it would snow and snow and snow. And now that the snow is coming in, now I can't go out and walk the property <laughs> because of my foot. So I'm like, that's Murphy's Law for you. But uh, Rob has posted MT Homestead's channel link. So be sure to pay MT a visit if you would. And Ed is saying to Amy Curry, I missed that comment, not eating anything right now as our grocery delivery hasn't arrived yet, was supposed to be delivered on Wednesday. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Four days without your grocery delivery. That's not good. Bren says to Rob, I'm doing great. Just tidying up inside the garden shed. Oh, that sounds like fun. I, I'm looking forward as much as I love winter. I am looking forward to getting back to gardening and doing some other uh, summer activities for sure. Arlen is saying to Billy Sutton, Hey, Billy, sweet home, Alabama. Good to see you. And Aussie's asking MT how they are doing. Rob is saying to Charles, nice. I have not seen Nashua in decades. MT says, Hey there, Scott at rumbling with the brooms. Um, can you send me Grace and Fire's mailing address so we can send the gift to? And let's see here. we got more salutations going on here. 
And Wayne Sperlin, how are you doing tonight, Wayne? Wayne is coming to us from Denver, North Carolina. Hope you are well. Stay safe. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Wayne. Glad to see you in here tonight. Ed says, weather and tanker traffic is keeping our supplies away for now. The road closure in Thompson Pass from avalanches. Oh, I wasn't even aware that there had been avalanche up there. So Thompson's Pass is along the Richardson Highway um, as you head from the Copper River Basin where I live down towards um, Valdez. And Valdez gets the most snow out of anywhere in Alaska. And Thompson's Pass is frequently closed or has the potential to be closed several times a year from avalanches. So I hope nobody was caught in that avalanche. But yeah, I had not heard that. But I also don't watch the news, don't listen to the news or anything like that. I get all my news from you guys. That's how I learn what's going on in the world. Uh, Monica says, um, you all read so fast and so well in your lives. I don't know if I could do it, lol. Um, so I used to, someone had asked me this question just recently, what I used to do in my previous life before YouTube. And one of the things that I did was uh, I was a spokesperson for the company that I worked for, um, for making and publishing uh, training videos. And so I got used to reading from a teleprompter. So that's probably why I read a little fast, but also there's usually so many comments it's hard to keep up with. So I feel sometimes like I'm the guy from the micro machines commercials for sure. And Alaska cut the cord is saying to Bren, not been a good day, but it's got to get better. Oh no. Hopefully things are not too bad. Sorry to hear you guys are not having a good day though. That's never fun. Brent says, I'm eating lollies and sweets, getting in early on the Christmas treats. Nice, nice, nice. Nothing wrong with that. I'm always guilty of sneaking uh, sweets, that's for sure. And Arlen is saying to Billy, I'm in uh, Fairhope, Alabama for now. I'm hoping to move uh, to Alaska in 2024. Come on, Arlen. It's time. that That year is almost here. Annette says to Rob over the Cremedian, I like the cabin from your video. Very cool. And Ozzy says, thanks to Alaska Cut the Cord. Rob is saying thank you to Annette. And Billy says, Monica, it would be it would be a break for me to have uh, a live go slower, lol. I can't hardly keep up. <laughs> Sorry about that, Billy. And Alaska cut the cords, uh, or Brent is saying to Alaska cut the cord, is it the snow and cold? Did things break down? I hope not. I agree. I hope nothing broke down. And Piper O'Neill, how are you doing tonight? Piper says, hi, I'm back. It's raining in Florida. Yeah, we were, there was some chat earlier about all the tropical storms or, you know, a storm like a tropical storm on its way to the coast of Florida. So again, hoping you're safe and thanks for being here tonight. And Monica says, I'm such a shy, nervous little bee. I will hopefully get the nerve to go live and talk to everyone one day. I think the weirdest thing is hearing and seeing yourself, Billy. Yeah, I agree. That was one of the things that took me a while. And also, like I said, for me, because I had previous experience being on camera, I had a hard time talking naturally to the camera. Um, one of the very first videos that I did uh, where I was prepping for my first winter here. And I was talking about um, getting my oil tank filled and the trees that, you know, I had felled and things like that. I came across like I was literally doing a training video uh, for the company that fills the oil tanks. It was so bad. I, I watch it now and I just cringe. I cut a lot of it out though, because it was so bad, so bad. So it takes time. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. And I just literally picture that my camera is my daughter um, or friends. Like I'm talking to each one of you face to face. And because we talk in here all the time and on other lives, I feel like I know all of you. So it comes across much easier now than it did at the beginning. So with time, you'll get there, Monica. Just don't get too upset you know, with yourself. I still get nervous. In fact, I had somebody uh, comment about my nervous, repetitious, way of speaking the other day. And I was like, I get nervous. I can't help it. You know, I've been doing this for two years and I still get nervous in front of the camera. I think we all do though, to be honest. <clears throat> and sourdough is saying four feet. Wow. Yeah. 12 to 15 uh, feet to be safe. 
uh, to prevent freezing. Yes, yes. If you can dig down that far, a lot of times though, there's not heavy equipment that people have access to out here sometimes. And so they're digging trenches by hand and what have you. And I, I can't even imagine. I, I just can't. So if you're in an area where you know someone who has some heavy equipment or you can get to an area where you can rent some, it's well worth it here. Because like I said, three feet down and you are going to hit uh, permafrost in a lot of areas of Alaska for sure. And Billy is saying to Arlen, I have a sister and her kids in Spanish Fort. One might be in Fairhope, pretty area. But I'm jealous of your plans to move. I think you. I think we're all excited for you too, Arlen, for sure. And there is Sourdough's channel link, so be sure to pay 1968 Alaskan Sourdough a visit. And uh, Adam and Phyllis are asking Sourdough how are things his way. And Monica says, "Hi, Piper. Raining here in Louisiana too." And P&J says, Monica, Jason and I haven't done a live yet. I think practice makes perfect and we just need to do it, Lowell. Yeah, at first, um, you know, I have a good friend of mine that kind of, I don't know, he, he likes to support me in, you know, telling me you should think about this and you should do this and you should do that. Very brave person. And I'm always like, oh, I'm not comfortable doing that. <laughs> and after a while, I was like, okay, I'll listen. I'll listen. I'll give it a try. And I did it and I'm fine. And, and so I thanked him, you know, I was like, yeah, that was very nice of you to keep encouraging me to do it because I too can be shy. It probably doesn't come across on the camera very much, but I think we're all shy. So Sardo says things be good. I'm not uh, going to admit how swapping dishwashers almost cost me dearly. Oh my goodness. Hopefully uh, not too much though. Hopefully nobody was hurt in that dishwasher swap. And Susan says, thank you alone. I appreciate your concern. You are more than welcome. And like I said, uh, praying that everybody comes through that storm safely. Billy says to Monica, I'm sure you'll be fine. Remember you're among friends. That is exactly what it is. A big happy family and a big group of friends here for sure. And Rebecca says, oh yes, Cajun is Cajun good is delicious. I'm sure she meant food. Cajun food is delicious. Uh, can you get enough Cajun seasoning up there in Alaska? If not, I can definitely mill some for you in the spring. If you want to mill some for me in the spring, that would be great. Um, I tend to buy the big canisters um, of seasoning because I go through it so fast. But, you know, the one thing that I don't have up here is some good Louisiana hot sauce. That is the one thing that I'm missing is some decent hot sauce. I There was a brand that I bought in one of the stores and I don't remember what the name of the brand was, but it obviously wasn't good because I used it once and then the next time I went to get it, it had molded and there should be enough vinegar in there that that should never happen. So if you have a good... Um, Cajun hot sauce. I would love some Cajun hot sauce. If you can send me a link for one or, you know, provide the name of one that I can purchase, that would be fantastic. And thank you for being here, Rebecca, also. And Panhandle says, have you given any thought to which generator you need? Yeah, I've, I've been toying around with the idea of bringing in the generator, but I have a couple of, I don't know, hesitations, I guess, about the generators. One is, I really don't want to do solar. Um, I don't want to do solar, even though that would be probably the best thing to do. I don't want to do solar because I don't know that I'm going to get enough solar power off of it to, to meet my needs. I know John in Alaska has been telling me, just add an extra battery, you'll be fine. Get an extra, you know, solar panel, you'll be fine. But um, the other thing is, is that whether it's the solar or it's a, you know, gas generator or it's a battery backup system is all of those things are eventually going to fail. And then what do I do? You know, I have to recycle those things and there's no recycling here. Um, I don't know if there's recycling in Anchorage or Fairbanks for those type of things, but there definitely is not on this side of the state. And I don't want those things just collecting around my property. The other thing is, is that if it was a gas generator, you know, whether it's diesel or gas, what happens when you know, there's a major snow, snowstorm, I can't get off the property and I don't have any gas for it right now. Granted, I could keep gas on hand, but you know, gas only lasts so long. So I'd have to be swapping that out. It's just a lot of hassle. And really what I'm trying to do here is stay away from electric 
items as much as I possibly can. To be honest, I wouldn't even have my computer here if it wasn't for doing YouTube um, and if I hadn't been working from home when I first started. And the freezers are one thing that I just, I know I can't really do without, but those I can push outside in the wintertime and minimize my dependency on the electric grid in the summertime um, if I use solar in the summertime. But I could do without lights in my cabin and be fine. I can use, um, you know, lanterns, headlamps, oil lamps, things like that. And I realize you have to replenish those fuel sources as well. But I'm not sure that I'm going to expend the money for a generator or for solar. I just, I'm not sold on it just yet. But we'll see. Maybe after this winter, I'll, I'll give up the ghost and just do it. Um, we'll see. And Norm says, I had not even considered the trips to the outhouse. Very tough issue. Yeah, it can be, uh, but I just take it slow. I put my uh, ice cleats on my boot because if I don't do that, this boot has no traction on the bottom of it. And so very easy to slip. I'm more afraid I'm going to break a leg um, doing it because a couple of times that my foot has slipped, it's like you hyperextend your knee. So uh, that's where my biggest concern comes with walking outside with this boot on. And um, let's see here. Rebecca says, dog, not good. Lol, dog, not good. I'm not following that one. Sorry, I missed something there. And she says, oh, autocorrect is horrible. Food, not dog. <laughs> Laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I figured you meant was food on the earlier statement. So, And now Kenai is dreaming. So you're probably hearing him yipping in his sleep. Um. Ona, how are you doing tonight? Ona says, happy to catch you live. Hello from New Jersey. How do you manage cooking for one? Um, it was a little bit difficult at first because I was used to cooking for my family. I have three children. And um, parsing that down to just one um, was just a matter of, you know, either doing the math if it was a recipe that I was following. But a lot of things I just cook from memory. And so I just use less of each ingredient. Um, and then if I do wind up making enough for a big, you know, enough to feed an army, I just proportion it out and freeze those extra servings. So typically though, what I do is I cook enough for me to eat tonight and then the leftovers I'll have for lunch the next day. So that's really how I'm managing to eat and not make a dent in all that meat I have in there. It's because I eat off of it twice, sometimes three or four times. So that, that was the biggest thing on, um, you know, how I managed to cook for myself as a lot of it gets divvied out for extra portions later on in the week or in the months to come. And Billy says to Rebecca Lowell, I was wondering on the dog comment, Monica says, lots of police and firefighters was in the live at the parade. That was actually right outside my house. Kind of neat uh, that I don't have to go far for all of these festivals. That is pretty cool. That is actually really cool. Um, the little town that I grew up in, we used to have the parade go right by the end of the street I lived on. So we would just walk down the street, sit on the sidewalk and watch the parades go by. I do kind of miss that, though, uh, to be honest, like that small town living. And I mean, even though like the area in which I live, there are a couple small towns, uh, a few you know, miles, 15 or so away from me. But um, I do miss like the parades and the, you know, get togethers and things like that. So I'm, I'm a little envious of you there that you have that going on because those are fun to watch and participate in. And Panhandle says we use champion generators as our backup and they work well for the price point. I did look at a generator um, a few months back when I was at Costco and it wasn't too expensive for what they're asking. And it looked like it had everything I could possibly need. Um, but like I said, I'm just not sure that I want to go that route. I, I haven't talked myself into it by any means. Uh, D&D uh, says to sourdough, I decided against a dishwasher because I have to tear out a cabinet for it. And I have the original 1940s cabinets. I'm doing a lot of dishes by hand, but it's worth it. I actually love doing dishes by hand. Um, to me, that's where I get to zone out and like my brain can work through all sorts of, you know, problems that I need to work through, whether it's, you know, thinking about a new project here on the cabin or something else that needs to be done. I love just doing the dishes by hand. I think doing my dishes by hand and doing my dishes uh, or dishes, my laundry by hand, I think my clothes come out way cleaner 
than they ever did in the dishwasher or in the laundry machine. So um, Monica says, uh, laughing at Rebecca and says, I know what you mean on autocorrect. Have half the time. I can't even read what I typed. I think we're all that way. Talk, talk to text is just as bad though. One time I was using a talk to text to send a message to my old boss and it came across so incorrect and it was not good. And my boss could not figure out for the life of him what I was saying. I was just like, oh, I'm never doing that again, ever. Hello, Joel Johnson. How are you doing tonight? Joel is coming to us from Minnesota. Thank you for being here, Joel. And Alaska Cut the Cord says uh, to Panhandle, the champion generators have been really good here as well. Well, if I do decide to get one, I'll keep champion in mind for sure. I actually had not heard of the champion brand uh, before tonight. So uh, thank you for passing that along for sure. And there is Diana's channel link for everybody who's interested in checking out what Diana has going on in Minnesota, D&D's Minnesota Farm. And thank you for posting that, Rob. Happy says, I can't wait for chicken. We're having steak and mushrooms tonight. Oh, steak and mushrooms is always good too. And Diana says to Joel, where are you? I'm near Clearbrook, way in the North Woods. And Billy is saying to Panhandle, love my champion generator. Well, there's three votes for the champion. That's good to know. And Monica says, that sounds so good, happy chappy. And Diana is saying thank you to Rob. And Rob is saying, don't buy a Furman uh, Genset. Mine died at 500 hours. Yeah, and I have, um, somebody told me, oh, I wish I could remember the brand. Oh, I, I wish I could remember the brand. It's it's not the Jackery. Um, they're orange, though, like the Jackery. I wish I could remember it. But they have five of them, and all five have died. Um, and they haven't had them very long. So, you know, that's that's an unfortunate thing about when you buy these electronics. And then, again, what do you do with them when they die, you know? So that's the main reason why I'm not sold, sold, so sold on them. And Billy says, ouch, Robin, Sarah, that's too bad with the Furman. And Lee says, alone, are you going to try planting some different veggies this summer? And will you enlarge the garden area? Um, I'm not sure if the garden area will get enlarged this summer because there's still some work to be done on the back of the property. And I have um, some wildflower seeds, Alaska wildflower seeds that I would love to spread back there in that clearing. And um, my contractor told me, to not put them out this year. He said, he said, wait um, and do it next fall. He said, because he's going to be driving all over that area this um, coming spring and summer. So it's going to have to wait, unfortunately. But yeah, I do plan on planting some additional crops and getting my crops started sooner and doing it a little bit differently than I did this year. I got things to sprout, but um, I didn't sprout things early enough. And then they didn't take off as well as I'd hoped, but I still got a lot of produce out of there. I still have potatoes. I still have cabbage. Um, what else do I have out of the garden still? Carrots. Yeah, I can't think of anything else that I still have, but no, the carrots, I, the carrots I wound up putting in um, the daikon relish that I make. And yeah, I still have some of that. So but yep, the garden will eventually expand greatly. So uh, Rebecca says, by the way, Denver is losing. Sorry, Denver fans. Oh, that's not good. Who are they playing against tonight, Rebecca? Bren says, alone, how's your stock up in the root cellar going? Well, as I just mentioned, still have, you know, uh, the potatoes going on and I still have cabbages. I'm trying to think what else did I grow? Some of the things that I, I planted, uh, my beets, I, I, even though my beets were small, I still have some of those. Those are, those are staying fine in the sand. Um, I planted fennel. It didn't do good. I planted Brussels sprouts. They didn't come up. Ground cherries. It wasn't warm enough here for those. And my onions and leeks. I think the seeds were too old to really germinate. Uh, cilantro didn't do well. The zucchini, I only got a handful of zucchini and they were really small. Um, so yeah, so I'm still happy with what I got out of the garden, but I think I could have done way better. So next year, do things a little bit differently. And Piper says, I'm going to Maine for nine days, Christmas and New Year's. Ooh, fun. Be safe going out there, but I hope you have a happy and fabulous holiday. 
Uh, Rob says, yeah, we now have been using a Cummins gas generator for over a year and now no issues. I want a military 6.5 kilowatt diesel. We'll try to order one from the surplus auctions this summer. That's the way to do it for sure. And Sourdough says to Rob, I have a four kilowatt Cummins, a uh, 4K Cummins, fairly new, but love it. Good to know. And Billy says, hi to Piper. Trip to Maine sounds wonderful. And Rob is saying to Curmudgeon, that is what we have. And Diana says, thanks, my friend. Uh, we are having a great time here so far. Lots of snow is okay since we don't have jobs to drive to anymore. That is a good thing. Uh, we're making friends with the Amish in the area and they are wonderful people. Well, that's fantastic. I'm glad that you guys are making some good friends up there and that you are doing well in your new homestead. Uh, Kath, how are you doing tonight? Kath says, good evening from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's very odd weather here. We have not had snow. Really? No snow yet. Yikes. Wow. I would have thought for sure that you guys would have had some snow on the ground at this point, similar to what I have, but hopefully it's coming your way soon. Thanks for being here too tonight, Kath. I appreciate it. Rob is saying to Sourdough, I can uh, charge the batteries at 50 amps going in and get over three days on one, no, on one fuel filling. Well, that's good to know. Uh, Piper said for work, lol. I will take it. Yeah, any any trip sometimes is a good trip. Sorry you have to work during it though, but at least at least you're going to get to do it over the holidays if nothing else. And hopefully you're not actually working on those holidays. And Sourdough says to Rob, uh, I also have a Yamaha 7200D for my batteries. Had that for quite a while now. Been good to me. And the 49th state, how are you doing? The 49th says Olaf from Anchorage. Thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. And Billy Sutton says, Rob, military surplus generators sound awesome. Uh, Rob is saying to Sourdough, I have part of a 5.5 kilowatt Yami that Jim used on an old Chinese diesel. It's dead now. And what are you going to do with it? Again, I know it keeps sounding like a broken record, but it's just going to sit there. That's, that is the biggest headache I have about things. Uh, JD here. How are you doing tonight, JD? JD says, cheers from the Canadian Rockies. Woohoo! And Kath says, I just spent 20 minutes trying to seal one package of vegetables in my vacuum sealer. I feel your pain. Yep. It, was it because of power outages or was it because things just break down and they don't work? <laughs> Ed says to Adam, cut the cord. Um, Adam and Phil's over to Alaska, cut the cord. Filmed some fat Sitka blacktail deer yesterday on the beach. Awesome. That is pretty cool. Diana says to Rebecca, I'm a Patriots fan, so my season is not the best. It's pretty bad when the Broncos have a better record than my uh, Pats do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Rob says to Billy, I can get one with under 50 hours for about 3,000. Oh, that's that's not too bad. I don't know how, how big those actually are, though. Uh, Billy says he would take the trip, too, even for work. And Charlotte Bassett, how are you doing tonight, Charlotte? Charlotte says, hello, everyone. Raining most of the day here in South Mississippi. Fun. I love rain. I absolutely do. Uh, Rob says to Diana's farm, not good for the pats. Lee is saying hello to Rob. And Kathy Robinson, how are you doing tonight, Kathy? Kathy says, Merry Christmas to everyone from Mississippi. Thanks for being here, Kathy. And Monica is saying, Merry Christmas back. Susan is saying to Diana, I just subscribed to your channel. What a beautiful place you have. That barn she has is amazing. It's huge. I would love to have a barn like that on the property. Absolutely amazing. Alaska Cut the Cord is saying to Ed, uh, looking forward to seeing that. Going to be planning a trip to meet them in person. Those Sitka deer he's talking about. Annette says, Alaska is breathtaking. That it is. I I think I'm very blessed to live in one of the most beautiful states I've ever been in, for sure. And Rob is saying uh, to Alaska, cut the cord, right? I am ready. Um, Diana says, thanks to Susan. Piper says, rain, please go away. Florida does not need more rain. Yeah, I can understand that. There does come a point in time where it might get to be too much, uh, especially with the storms you guys have going on right now. Rob is saying to Billy, yeah, they still do surplus auctions. Saw one with 200 hours go for 
dollars the other day. Oh, now I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the government uh, surplus auction sites. Yes, uh, I have. Uh, my son was actually checking out those auction sites at one point, thinking about buying a military vehicle to turn into a overlanding vehicle. So now I'm, now I'm on board with you. Kat says, alone question. Why don't you have a generator financial decision? Well, no, as I mentioned, it's more of a, I don't want to have to worry about the fuel or not meeting my needs or uh, having to dispose of it should and if it should ever fail. So P&J says, alone, have you seen any moose in your yard, heard any whoops? So I've not seen any moose. I pulled out the binoculars earlier today to look uh, from the loft door to see if I could see any tracks in the snow um, back towards the tree line and I cannot see anything. Um, but I have been hearing something in the north corner uh, where the north trail is. There's something back there that's breaking branches every day, every night. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't hear any other animal sounds coming from that direct spot. But I have been hearing wolves and or coyotes um, in the air, same area, but further back, probably, I don't know, a mile or so back. Um, but I don't think I've heard them for like a week, week and a half now. So other than that, I'm not really hearing anything or seeing anything. Though this morning I heard uh, something outside, uh, but I think it was an ermine. It was some little critter chirping away, but it wasn't a squirrel. So I think it was the ermine uh, chasing something. But he's doing a good job of keeping the mice at bay, so I'm happy. He can he can stay. He can invite his whole family. I wouldn't mind one bit if I was, you know, had 10 ferrets running around here. It would be just fine with me. And uh, Ed is saying to Alaska, cut the cord, I've never seen a skinny black-tailed deer here. Well, now we know if you want to go black-tailed deer hunting, where to go. And Jordan, how are you doing tonight? Jordan says, uh, what? what you on next weekend on Christmas Eve or Christmas day? Uh, I am not doing a live, not necessarily. I might do a live Christmas day would be Monday and Christmas Eve Sunday. I don't know. I might have to see what am I going to be doing? Otherwise I'm going to be resting. I'm just going to be taking the day easy, not really working on any projects. Um, just, just having a down day, just, posing up with Kenai and enjoying whatever the weather has to show us that day. And uh, Jordan says, uh, who is ready to track Santa on Christmas Eve? Yes. Um, I know there are many people who are going to be doing that. Back in Colorado, they used to do it on the news and they would show Santa's uh, track for sure. So I think it's cute when they do that. Uh, D&D says, I'm so ready to get in my garden and start growing things. What are you planning to grow this year? Um, so one of the things that I would like to grow this year is peppers, green peppers specifically, because I go through a lot of green peppers, red peppers too, uh, but specifically green peppers are one of the things that I would like to do. Brussels sprouts and fennel. I love both of those. Um, more, if I could get squash to grow, if I got a greenhouse, I would do squash, but I don't have a greenhouse yet. So, um, cold, I'm really about cold weather crops. I don't really have a whole lot of warm weather crops other than jalapenos and green peppers that I eat. I don't really eat tomatoes, um, due to an allergic reaction to them. Um, though I do like, uh, cherry tomatoes and sometimes they give me reactions. Sometimes they don't. It's something, an acid in there or something that, uh, causes my tongue to blister of all things, not a fun uh, allergy to have, but it's the least of all the allergies I have at least. Uh, again, to repeat my words there, sorry about that. And hello, Charles Quick, how are you doing tonight? So good to see you in here. Charles says, good evening, Aria. And Ira Handworker, how are you doing tonight, Ira? Hope you and your mom are doing well. Ira says, so glad to catch you alone. Hello to everyone. And Mountain Mariner says, well, winds are blowing around 80 miles per hour right now. The weathermen lied about the 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. They usually do. They usually get it wrong. But I hope you are, like I said, staying safe and dry. Uh, Rob says to Ira, hello, how are you and mom doing? And Jordan says, what are you doing next weekend for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? Yep. 
And uh, let's see here. Rob is saying to Ed, sounds like fun with those high winds. Aussie says, weatherman is always fibbing. And Happy says, hey, Alon, have you heard from Nomi? Is he doing okay? I have not heard from Nomi in a couple of weeks. I have, like I said, I've been kind of behind on videos. Um, but um, I should go check him out and see what he's got going on. Last time I talked to him, he was doing great. But like I said, it's been a couple of weeks. So uh, we'll just have to see how things are with him. Fingers crossed he's doing well. And Clint says, wow, that's brutal wind. I agree. Rob says, I baked sugar cookies yesterday. I think Sarah and Zeus have eaten half of them. I know I would if I was eating sugar cookies or had them here. They'd, they'd probably all be gone. Happy says, he's been quiet. I'll reach out to him and find out what's going on with him for sure. Thanks for letting me know, Happy. I appreciate it. And Ira says, my mom and I are on the mend from COVID. Oh, no. But other than that, um, doing well and are eating healthy and love to y'all. Well, we hope that you guys get better and completely better fast and that you guys stay healthy and safe from there on out. But tell your mom that my thoughts are with both of you and I'm wishing you both a speedy recovery for sure. Bren says, must be delicious cookies, Rob. Mountain Mariner is saying to Aussie, I'm certain the weatherman schooling is just a few semesters of learning to flip a coin. Oh my goodness. And Iggy, how are you doing tonight? Iggy Threadgood says, not sure I understand, not wanting to know what's going on in the world. Prepping, you need to know. I have a basic idea of what's going on in the world. There's enough that floats by on the screen of YouTube that you get a basic idea. Um, of what's going on. And I have enough friends and family back in the lower 48 that, you know, like to whisper of impending doom in my ear. So I have a good idea of what's going on, but I don't watch it on the, I don't watch the news ever, but I don't tune into things like that on a daily basis. One of the reasons I came out here was to get away from all the stress of the politics and the uh, craziness of the world. And so I figure I'm on a need to know basis now and I don't need to know it every single day, every minute of every day. It's just overwhelming. But I do agree. It You do need to know, you do need to be aware and you do need to prep and you do need to know more so about what's, you know, right around the corner and when, you know, you need to stock up on things. But I'm pretty well stocked up on things here and, you know, just take it day by day, day by day without getting too lost in the weeds on everything. Uh, Leslie Glenn, how are you doing tonight? Leslie says, hi, I'm from very near Rogue River, Oregon. Lol, just like the other person was. Sorry, I forgot who was from Rogue River. Apologies. And Diana says to a Rob Kermudge, uh, Rob over Kermudgeon, cookies are on my agenda tomorrow too. Yum. And uh, Rob says he thinks those cookies must be good. And P and J says cookies are mentioned are cookies are mentioned to be eaten. Rob or I'm sure she meant made. Yep, meant to be. Yep, autocorrect strikes again. And Kelly Nichols, how are you doing? Kelly says hello from Tennessee. Thank you for being here tonight, Kelly. Aussie says Rob, my girl cooked Christmas cookies and individually decorated each one of them, all forty. That's a talent. That's a talent that I don't have. I don't have a steady enough hand or the patience, I think, to decorate cookies. They would they would look like a big blob if I did that, I think. Uh, Diana says, or I'm sorry, Rob says to Diana, I bake a lot, so I do not mind. There you go. And Aussie says, true to Ed. Iris says, howdy to Clint. And Bren says, I'm thinking of bringing the whole family, eight of us, to do Alaska and Canada in two years when my youngest grandchild is five. So it's a memory and we'll enjoy it more. Yep. I The first time I came to Alaska, I came with my whole family. I came with my kids. I, my mom and dad were with me. Um, I had an aunt that had come along and some cousins. And it was a fabulous trip. It was definitely a memory worth making for sure. And part of the reason that I'm here today, in fact. Uh, Susan says, Rob, sugar cookies sound so good. I might have to make some up. And Aussie says, she said they were, but I'm on a diet. Oh, no. Uh, Rob says to Susan, they are nice and easy. 
Big T of our Rustic Log Cabin Life says, New Year's resolution, going back to playing and relearning my classical honor guitar. Um, my mom bought me for my 16th birthday, spent a decade without even playing it, going back to songwriting. Well, that sounds awesome. Hopefully you'll share some of that on your channel too, Big T. That would be really awesome uh, thing to see and partake in. So that's that's a talent right there. If you can play guitar or any instrument. I was always last chair in band at a 32 clarinetist. I have no rhythm whatsoever. So uh, D, uh, Diana says, me too, to Rob. I make almost everything from scratch. I'll be baking bread next week. That's a talent right there too, is baking bread, I think. I've done it, but it always does not turn out well. It's always flat or tough or, you know, whatever. So the one thing like, if I don't eat a whole lot of bread, but if I were, I would definitely work on it more. So I perfected it because not my skill set. Rob says to Bren, do it. I'll make room for you all. There you go. You got a place to stay when you guys come up and visit. Uh, PNJ says, Bren, that sounds awesome. And Ira says, I think you make everyone feel so comfortable. It's like we're all in your living room chatting. That's how I feel about it, too. I, I really do think about it like that. And Two Bears, how are you doing tonight, Two Bears? Two Bears says, good evening, everybody. I'm processing a deer. Oh, someone else got a harvest. Uh, so I'll be coming and going. I had to hang with the cool kids for a while, though. Well, thanks for hanging with us, Two Bears. Glad you're doing well. And congratulations on getting a deer. Aussie says, Brun, maybe we can do a group bargain tickets. There you go. Uh, get a bunch of you up here all at once. That would be fantastic. And got a lot of salutations going on to two bears. And PJ is saying congratulations also on the deer. Bren says, thanks, Rob. I think we are happy to squeeze into any space. We don't need much. There you go. And Rob says to Steve's Woodworking, how are you? Joel Johnson says, Diana's, um, Diana's farm is uh, Brainerd. That's where they're from, Brainerd. Sorry, took me a minute to read all that together. Uh, two bears thanks PJ and Diana says to two bears, we have an elk. We still need to finish butchering. We had to just quarter it and put it in the freezer while we were moving across country. Hopefully it stayed frozen for you. Um, yikes. And Rob says, Ooh, I am jealous. Yeah. Cause hardly anybody got a moose here this year. And Charlotte says, to all the Alabama redneck friends, I'm from a small town north of Mobile. Uh, my family is from Chatham. There you go. Chatham. Sorry, I said it wrong the first time. And Judy Grimm says, raining in Wisconsin, been in the 40s. Well, at least it's not too cold with the rain. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't drip down overnight and freeze to everything. Um, Two Bear says, thanks to Monica. And there is Bren Free's channel link for everybody. So be sure to go over and check out Bren's channel. I'm sure she would greatly appreciate that. Billy is saying to Arlen over at AFJ, if you don't have a YouTube channel, start one before you move and you and video your move. I agree. In fact, start one while you're still in your current place. Show a little bit about your lifestyle there. And then film your move up here. Show getting settled into your place, looking for property, all of that. I wish that I had had the courage to do that before I moved. I wished that I had shown a lot more um, in my move videos up here. And I also wish that um, when I got to the cabin that I was thinking about doing YouTube because I wasn't and I never filmed the cabin before I moved into it. So I didn't get to show all the things that were going on in the cabin at the time without a bunch of distraction of my furniture and clutter and things like that in the cabin. So I highly recommend to anybody who's thinking about starting a channel is don't be afraid to show the bad things that are going on, the things that you might be embarrassed by, because while you might be embarrassed by it in the moment, if you're, if you're making a series of videos, you might need to show that later on uh, when you've corrected this situation. So that's one of my big things is like, I don't always show uh, things in when they're in an awful state. But then when I go back, I'm like, Oh, I wish I'd filmed that. So I could show the before and the after, but yes, I agree. I think a lot of people should start a uh, YouTube channels. I realize it isn't for everybody, but anybody who wants, you know, to show and document what you're doing, this is a great way to do it for sure. And Monica says, you're welcome to two bears. 
Uh, Rob is saying, have not had Cajun food in a while. Well, you're missing out, Rob. You guys should really fix them. Um, to me, I love Cajun food. <laughs> and hi, Debbie. Debbie says, hey, gal, good to see you. I'm glad to see you too, Debbie. Thanks for being here tonight. And Two Bears is saying elk. Mm, yes, I do love elk meat. Elk meat is fantastic. Uh, Rob is saying, ooh, I have some hots for you. It's not a hot sauce. It's an additive. Uh, you will not want to use it solo. Uh, that I believe. I saw you talking about it previously. So yeah, next time I'm out your guys' way, I plan on, you know, getting a chance to see you and Sarah again and see Adam and Phyllis and um, maybe I can pick up a bottle then. And Billy is saying hi to two bears. Monica says we have a brand here called Louisiana Hot Sauce. Yeah, the one I bought, I want to say it was Caroline's. I want to say it was Caroline's, but if it is, uh, I don't remember. I know it began with the C though, but like I said, the fact that it molded after one, you know, use of it, I was not very happy. And hello, Ace. How are you doing tonight? Ace Snope is in the house and Ace says, howdy, fellow chatters. Um, so glad to have you here tonight, Ace. And Charles O'Neill, same to you, who says hello alone. PJ is saying hi to Ace and so is Billy. Excuse me, I'm going to hiccup here. Uh, Monica says, I will look into the hot sauce for you. Well, thank you, Monica. I appreciate that. And uh, Rob is saying hello to Ace. And so is Alaska Cut the Cord. And Two Bears is saying, Miss Alone, when I get a chance, I'll look up the info on a battery backup system for your cabin and send you the info to your email. Seeing how you have electric power on grid, you can just tap into that. Yeah, yep. I looked at getting a Blue Yeti. Um, before, but like I said, I'm just not sold on having that extra battery sitting around. It, I, the only bad part about the power outages here for me are when it takes me offline and I can't get a video out to everybody or it interrupts the live streams. Other than that, if the power went out and was out for a day, the food in my freezer stays frozen. And if I had to go without electricity for, you know, whatever else, which would basically just be the lights and the computers, it wouldn't bother me one bit to have the power out other than, like I said, when it interrupts me from communicating with all of you. So uh, Rob says, we do the same. I normally make a roast on Sunday. We have an easy meal on Mondays during the live. There you go. And Amy Curry says, last night was venison pot roast leftovers for tomorrow. Yummy. And let's go, Brandon, how are you doing tonight? Let's go says, I miss the old Grange Hall function. See, that's what I was talking about. Like we had, we didn't have a Grange where I grew up, but we did have a VFW. And, you know, I didn't go there as an adult, but as a kid, they would host events for the children in the neighborhood and stuff. And I just miss the, the feel of that type of a community. Um, I know that where I live, they have functions um, in the area every now and then, uh, but I'm never down anywhere where I can get notice of them. I hear about them after the fact, or I drive by and go, oh, they're doing something over there. Um, I'm really out of touch with the world, as you can tell. <laughs> and Rebecca says, yeah, sorry for that. I can't see my small screen on my phone. I didn't realize I had typed good instead of food until I tried fixing it and it had come up dog. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, Rob says, ooh, that was mean, Amy, for you to tease. And Norm says, power is such a needed service. There are many options, but I agree. You need to get what is going to be best for you. Yep. And Rob says, Sarah had a dishwasher in Florida, but never used it. Um, I know people that use it just simply to store their dishes in and don't ever wash dishes in it. And JD says, I wash my own dishes. I uh, never had a dishwasher ever. When I was growing up, we had a dishwasher, but the only time I think that we ever used it was to sterilize jars for canning. Other than that, I don't think we ever used the dishwasher. We did them all by hand. And Rob says, um, I'll trade for moose. <laughs> Onto it, Aussie. Or I'm sorry, Amy said that to Rob, that I'll trade for moose. Anto Dossi says, I have a dishwasher, but never use it also. Always by hand, save so much water too. Yep. And Rob is saying to Amy, I wish I had some moose. Ignomatic Witchin, how are you doing tonight? Gary is here and says, hello, everybody. Be sure to check out Gary's channel also, especially if you're into hunting and trapping. Um, he's got lots of that going on in his world. And uh, everyone's saying hello to Gary. 
And there is Gary's channel link over at Ignomatic Witchin. So be sure, like I said, to pay him a visit. And Lesko says, too noisy for me, just loud, the champion generator. Well, that's good to know, too. Thanks for the feedback on that, in case I do decide to get a generator down the uh, road from here. And Tammy per Perryman, how are you doing tonight? Tammy says, I have a sportsman's generator. I like it more than champion ones. I also have a Jackery solo solar generator. I can charge it in my truck when needed. I had looked at getting a Jackery because they had some of them um, in one of the hardware stores. Uh, but it, I was told that for what I needed it for, like the freezers and what have you, that it wasn't going to be enough to support that. That's the only reason I didn't buy that one that they were selling there. I wish I could remember what the other brand was. I cannot. But I'm sure it'll come to me at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Happy says, did you harvest much wild food this year as berries and such? So the only berries that I really harvested this year were um, cranberries, high bush cranberries. Um, but I didn't do anything with them. I wound up washing them and, and putting them in the freezer. Um, so I need to pull those out and actually do something with them. Uh, but the lingonberries never ripened up very well this year. Plus with all the work that I was having done, they kind of disturbed the bushes along the side of the driveway. So I didn't get those. Um, I didn't harvest. Well, I did harvest some of the hawk swings mushrooms again this year, but they were really bitter this year. Um, even the small ones were bitter. So I didn't actually wind up eating any of those. And um, <clears throat> let's see, what else did I have? I'm not sure I harvested much else this year. Um, I think that was it really. Uh, but yeah, I think that was it. And then uh, let's see here. Happy says, uh, made any homemade remedies this year? Or are you still running on last year's make? I'm still running on last year's make. So I'm still actually running on things that I made back in Colorado, believe it or not. So I still have comfort oil from Colorado. I still have um, echinacea tincture and my eardrops. Uh, the lavender, you know, I just used that fresh with the honey. Um, so yeah, I haven't made any new ointments or anything this year. Uh, but I have a feeling that next year I'm going to need to resupply those things as they are starting to lose potency as they sit longer and longer for sure. And the, I was telling myself the other day regarding the comfrey oil that I'm surprised I haven't put any on my foot um, because comfrey is great for healing bones. It's actually called nip bone for those of you who are not familiar with the plant. Um, you know, you can make a poultice out of it and put it in a in a cloth and wrap it around and it can heal up a sprain or a broken bone quite easily, quite quickly, they say. Um, and you can heal up a cut. You just want to make sure that cut is not deep uh, because if there's any dirt or bacteria or infection setting in there, it'll close up that and that wound and you'll wind up getting sepsis. So you want to make sure that you do it on superficial wounds or that that area has started to heal up and you are certain that there's no chance of infection before using comfrey on it. But I love comfrey. Comfrey is actually one of my favorite um, medicinal plants out there. So, and Vicki Berenger, how are you doing tonight? Uh, Vicki says that Denver is playing the uh, lions for whatever reason, my brain went to another team name, even though I could read lions on the screen. Thank you for that, Vicky. And there is onto it Aussie's channel link. So thank you for putting that up, Rob. And Monica is saying hi to Ignomatic. And Vicky says the score for the Broncos game is seven to seven for the Broncos. Lions are 21 at six o'clock. So 25 minutes ago, the lions were ahead. And Jacket Sprockets, how are you doing tonight? Jacket says, I will be sticking with a Honda generator. I have tried others and have spent more time and more money than the price difference. Yep, that's that's what I worry about too, is that I'll wind up buying something that's way more expensive than you know that a competitor is and does just as well as a competitor could have. So Rebecca says, Denver is playing against Detroit Lions. Right now it's 21, Detroit, Denver 3, and 3 in the third quarter. And Rob is saying, welcome to Aussie. And there's Alaska Cut the Cords channel link. So be sure to check out Adam and Phyllis's channel. Happy says, how much water do you go through a day? 
With the pups, we average about two gallons per day, including food, drinking water for us, all dishes and a wash. So for me on a daily basis, I would say that I probably go through maybe a gallon and a half a day. Um, and that's just on a normal day. So for cooking, body washing, and drinking water for Kenai and myself, it's probably a gallon and a half of water a day. Um, on the days where I do my dishes or I take a full bath, because a lot of times I don't take a full bath. I just, you know, do a, a quick wash of myself. Um, on those days, I can go through quite a bit of water. I can actually go through probably, I would say, eight gallons in just taking a bath and doing dishes. So about three gallons for doing dishes. Um, if I, depending upon how long it is between loads of dishes, if I wait and do them once a week, it's definitely three gallons. If I'm not, it's less than that. Um, but when I take a bath, I'm, I'm guilty of taking a nice luxurious bath, even though most people are probably thinking five gallons is not a luxurious bath, but trust me, uh, when you haven't taken, you know, a bath for a couple of days and then you sit in those five gallons of water, um, you know, I have a big stock tank that I sit in. Um, it's really, really comfortable. And I sit right in front of the fire, the wood stove. And so I stay nice and toasty warm and I don't mind it one bit. I do not miss taking showers um, in, you know, a traditional bath or anything like that. I don't miss it one bit. I know I probably sound a little crazy right now, but the other thing is, is like I'm, a lot of days I'm not doing a whole lot. A lot of days I'm either just sitting or I'm not, you know, digging in the dirt out in the garden or working on projects around the cabin. Sometimes I'm literally just, you know, sitting around, um, especially with my foot being the way it is. And when you're doing that, you're not really getting dirty. So in that case, I don't need a full bath every single day. So uh, Deb says, hello from Little Village in Saskatchewan, Canada. Well, hello, Deb. Thanks for being here tonight. Greatly appreciate it. And you're getting a lot of uh, salutations here to you. And Lee says, alone, is your cabin fully furnished now or will you hit some more antique stores this summer? Um, I don't know that I'll be buying much more furniture. I think there's two more chairs that I would like to have. I would love to get some Chesterfield chairs, some leather Chesterfield club chairs um, so that I have a full living room set. Um, that way, if I have more than one visitor over, they have a comfortable place to sit. Um, and I would love to get an a coffee table for the living room as well. But other than that, I don't really have any plans to bring in any more furniture. I have so much furniture in here now that um, I actually, when I brought home the furniture that I got from the estate sale, I was thinking, oh my, what did I do? I have too much furniture now, but some of it will find a home when I redo the Arctic entry and turn that into my bathroom. So that'll clear some of it out of the cabin. Uh, Kremenj says, I will pull all the uh, copper wires out of the old generator windings for Sarah to use in some art projects. There you go. That is a good idea. I think that that's a great use of uh, putting those generators to a new home, a new purpose, if you will. Brent says, I got ahead or I've got to head out now to take some things to the little recycling depot. Again, I'm adding words here. I'll chat soon. Until then, have a great day, everyone. Well, you too, Bren, and good luck on your way to the Recycling Depot. And thanks for popping in. Uh, Kath says, Alberta has been in a drought this year. For it to continue in the winter is sobering. Yes. And that means that next summer is going to be harsh also on the ground and everything. So uh, hopefully that turns around here, you know, in the next month or so. And you guys wind up getting a good amount of snow over the course of the remainder of the winter. Aussie says, that's why I use hand tools for everything. They rarely break down. And in the bin, if I can't fix it, no disposal cost. Yep, that is one of the reasons I chose to go with the more mechanical things that I have here also is, A, I can wrap my head around mechanical. I'm not good with electronics as far as how to repair them, how to fix them. I don't understand um, electronics real well. But most things I can either MacGyver to fix them when it's mechanical or I can fix them with parts that I might have on hand. So, and if they break, again, no disposal fees. I'm not adding anything back into the land that it didn't already come from anyhow. 
So I don't feel so bad about it also when I have to dispose of something. Uh, Deb says, no snow here yet either. No good. We need snow. Uh, Monica says, <clears throat> have to head out alone. Thanks for everything. See you on your next live. Happy holidays, everyone, and good night. Good night, Monica. Thank you for being here. And again, everybody, if you have the chance, go over and check out Monica's live from earlier and subscribe to her channel if you're not already. And P&J is saying to Monica, great to see you here. And Merry Christmas. And John in Alaska, how are you doing tonight, John? John says, hello, everyone. Just woke up from a nap. It's 30 degrees and a little windy. Well, hopefully the winds don't kick up too much for you tonight, John. But I appreciate you popping into the live stream. And there is P&J's Homestead Adventures YouTube channel link. So be sure to pay P&J a visit. And Ona says, it was cold summer across Alaska for gardening. Not just your late start. Possibilities are available. Yep. Yep. That's what I had heard. In fact, um, oh, one second here. I got to take a drink. I'm getting a dry throat. I had seen <clears throat> some crops from some other people in the area from their gardens, and they were just as small as mine were. And they're more seasoned gardeners than I am for sure. So I knew for sure that it wasn't just my issue or just this area. But yeah, all of Alaska had a very cold or wet um, summer this year. And Kathy says, uh, user error and cheap vacuum sealer, lol. But I'm freezing or dehydrating all leftovers. The price of food is bringing the frugal out in me. Yes, that's that's what I keep hearing too, is that the prices are just going up and up and up and up. And I don't know how anybody's making it out there right now. I saw a thing uh, the other day. It was a video about Costco prices. It wasn't here in Alaska. I don't know what state he was in, but everything had basically doubled in price. And he was saying that the items, some of the items that, you know, that they were selling, such as the produce, cucumbers or uh, green peppers, things like that. He said, you know, they're selling six in a bag, but the six in a bag, uh, the individual price was still more than double what you could get an individual one at the grocery store for. And that's, that's not right. That's, we buy, you know, Costco memberships, to get a bulk deal to get a better pricing. And I know they are good on some things and not others, but it appeared that on the standard things that they were just not in alignment right now with pricing. So it's a sad state to see things in. Rob says, I'm seeing a cow moose racks all over the place. Cow moose tracks all over the place. Well, you are lucky to be seeing that. Like I said, in my area, I know I don't have any wildlife going on right now at all. And uh, Rob is saying, very true to Ona. And Billy says, hi, John, believe it or not, I was wondering about you, hoping you were just napping. Same, I was also wondering about John. So I'm glad you're doing good, John. And Diana says to Rob and Two Bears, we'll video the butchering process. We waste nothing. Anything we can't eat goes to our two German shepherds. Uh, they have great teeth from eating the tiny bones. Yep. And raw bones are, will not hurt your dogs. That's for sure. And uh, Rob is saying, I bet to Diana and P and J saying hi to John. Lee says, alone, do you have any wild turkeys up your way? If you don't, lol, I'll be happy to send you some from Maine. I don't think there are any wild turkeys in Alaska at all. Uh, to my knowledge, there are none in Alaska, but that's funny. People will be asking me, how'd you get that turkey? Oh, you know, um, just happened to wander by. Two Bears says, I'll have to watch that from Diana. And John in Alaska's channel link is right there. So be sure to pay John a visit and tell him alone sent you. And Deb says, I have the same tomato allergy. It's good to know that it isn't just me. Sometimes my family's like, oh, it's all in your head. You're making it up until they see my tongue. And then they're like, okay, you're not making that up. Uh, Donna says, alone, a good gardener to watch is Garden Like a Viking. Okay, I'll check them out. He has been all over the world on all of the United States and has a lot to offer in knowledge. Well, thank you, Donna. I'll check them out. Garden like a Viking. Uh, Alaska Cut the Court says, how has the weather been on Australia uh, to Aussie and Bren Free? And Terry, how are you doing tonight? Terry says, are wood stoves easy to cook on? Um, so I don't have a wood cook stove. I just have a wood burning stove that is traditionally meant just for um, 
heating once home. And I can cook on it fairly easily, I find. If I'm making a dish that would typically be made in a crock pot, I can either set that big Dutch oven, whether it's a cast iron one or a ceramic Dutch oven, directly on the stovetop or with a trivet underneath it and let that simmer all day on the stovetop and the food comes out juicy and tender and tasty. Or I can bake on it as well, bake on the top of it, that is. Uh, again, by putting trivets underneath whatever I'm baking and then putting a roaster upside down on top of the items that I'm baking. And, um, you know, I have to rotate the food every so often because it's going to be hotter, of course, closer to the chimney. But I find that it's not that difficult to cook on there. Um, you don't want to get your wood stove top too, too hot, um, especially if you're using the eco fans, because when you do that, it'll burn out the solenoid in those eco fans and then they won't work. But other than that, I think it's fairly easy, but I would love to get a new wood cook stove. I'm looking at a new one. I, I know a lot of you have sent me links for used ones, but I'm going to purchase something new when I do buy one. And the brand that I'm looking at currently is J.A. Roby out of uh, Canada. And the reason I'm looking at them is because they have a, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the firebox on the wood stove is large enough that It'll hold enough wood in there that it could heat my entire cabin, which is what I really want. So I hope that answered your question, though. And Ona says, hello to John. And Rob is saying to you, Terry, depends upon the type. And as a former journalist, I do not trust the news anymore. Rob says, I agree. I don't think I've trusted the news for a long, long time. And Aussie says uh, to um, Adam and Phyllis, it's a beautiful sunny day, 27 degrees Celsius heat wave coming uh, later this week. 40s for a few days, they say, just as I go back to work too. Wouldn't you know it? And uh, Alaska cut this cord says to Terry, cooking on a wood cook stove is like having all of your burners on, but each one is a different temperature. Kind of have to move things around a bit. I would think so. And uh, Marla, how are you doing tonight, Marla Martucci? Uh, so glad to see you in here. Marla says, hi, alone. I wanted to ask about your Berkey H2O filter system. I have the same with both carbon and heavy melt metal filters. When I boil H2O, I get a lot of sediment around the pot. Do you experience this too? So I do experience um, some deposits in you know, the bottom of my kettle and what have you. But when I don't boil my water, now again, I'm getting well water. Um, when I don't boil or when I don't filter my water and then I boil it, I get way more, way more. So I know that the uh, Berkey is removing a lot of, you know, debris and whatever else might be in the water. I do trust my Berkey filters um, for the most part, but I still boil my water before I drink it just because of the fact that I am using well water. Um, and I don't, I know for a fact that the well that I get my water from is not treated. Um, the other thing is, is that I don't use the fluoride filters. When I lived in the city, I used those fluoride filters on my Berkey. I no longer use those. I just use the carbon filters. And um, I don't seem to have the sediment, though, like if I were to put the water just in something else, it just seems to be whatever it pulls out when you boil it. So hopefully that answered your question, Marla, but I really don't have a, another answer other than that. But I know other people have recommended other uh, water filtration systems. And I know Berkey just went through, you know, a lawsuit, maybe even with the federal government. But I've used Berkey for probably, I want to say the last 10 years, and I've had no issue with my filters whatsoever. I've never gotten sick from my water. I've never had an off taste in my water. And, you know, they say that you can run some dye through your Berkey filters uh, to find out, you know, if they're really filtering things. So maybe try that, red dye specifically. Um, <clears throat> but the one thing I will say is that I use my Berkey filters to the point that when the water starts trickling through so incredibly slow um, that you you know something's wrong with them, that's when I replace my filters. So I probably use my filters way too long, um, but I love my Berkey. I'm not going to deny that. And uh, Arlen is saying to John Alaska, 
Hi, John. Good to see you. And Rob is saying to Terry, I am working on a video for cooking on a wood stove. It will show the basics of cooking on a regular wood stove and a wood-fired cook stove. There you go. That's the video we all need to see. And John is saying hi to Adam and Phyllis. Amy is saying hi to John. And John is saying hi to Ace and AFJ. Alaska Cut the Cord says to Marla, some dissolved lime will definitely get through the lime deposits. Uh, we have the same issue, but it's minor compared to non-filtered water. Exactly. Thank you, Amy, says John. And Iris says, I wish I had baked sugar cookies, but we are enjoying the cans of Danish butter cookies. Oh, I love butter cookies. I did bake homemade soft pretzels, and they are amazing dipped in mustard. That sounds really, really good. And Rob says, ooh, to Ira, those are good, and they make good storage cans afterwards. Uh, and sewing kits <laughs> full of buttons in my house. And let's see here. We got some salutations going on again. And Yvonne Marie, how are you doing tonight? Yvonne says, hello, everyone in loan. Hope all are having a good evening. Well, I hope the same for you, Yvonne. Good to see you in here again. And let's see here. More salutations. And Happy says, saying good night to you, my friend. Merry Christmas to you. And if you're not doing to you if you're not doing a live. Well, thank you for that. I probably won't do a live on Christmas, but we'll see. Maybe I will. Uh, but either way, good to see you again. Happy and good luck on getting all of your documentation that you were talking about the last time. And um, I'm glad to know that you guys are doing well now that you're here in the States. So see you on the next one. John Alaska says, hey, Adam, uh, did Sid get the car fixed? And Rob says, yeah, we talked about videoing the journey, but did not when they moved here to Alaska. We did not have loads of photos of it, or we do have loads of photos of it that I will put in a video someday. Smart. There you go. And getting some good night saying here. And in Alaskan Homestead, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are well. Brian and Diana said, popped in to say a hello and happy holidays. Well, happy holidays to you guys too. And um, like I said, I hope you guys are doing well with everything you've got going on. So if you're not um, already subscribed, which I'm sure most of you are, to Brian and Diana's channel, Alaska Homestead, be sure to check them out and see what's going on on their little neck of the woods. They live down in an island off of Juneau. Um, Adam and Phyllis are saying, yes, he just finished fixing the car. And Rob is saying, alone, Sarah does not do spicy foods. Oh, that's unfortunate. Spicy foods are the best. But I understand not everybody can tolerate them for sure. And Brian and Diana are waving. And Alaska cut the cord. Uh, John is saying good to hear. <clears throat> and there is an Alaskan Homesteads channel link. So be sure to check them out um, if you're not familiar with their channel already. And we've got some salutations going on. And Debbie says, I really like the Cholula sauce. Yeah, Cholula sauce is good, but it definitely is not the same as like a Louisiana hot sauce, in my opinion. Um, I do love Tabasco, too. I put Tabasco on just about everything. And Billy says, alone, I started watching your channel by beginning with your move and later did the same with Mitchell's in Alaska. Yep. That's the way to do it, I think, is like start at the very beginning and that way you know exactly what these people who you're watching have been through, where they started out and and see how they progress, you know, with their lives in these new locations here in Alaska. I think that was a great way to do it. I appreciate it too, by the way, Billy. Susan says, Alon, why don't you plant some ghost peppers in your garden next time? I don't know that I would eat those. I do like hot, but ghost peppers might be a little bit too hot for me. And Ed says, uh, Alaskan Homestead, hello, Brian. Forgot which spelling you use. Uh, spelled it two different ways for you there. And Charles says, when I make chili, I use a huge pot of chili and one small jalapeno. When I make green chili, I put in a couple jalapenos. I put in Anaheim's. If I can get Columbine chilies, I'll put those in there as well. Um, some hatch chilies. It is chock full of a bunch of different chilies, but Oh, I should make some green chili. Now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Amy says, I have thought about starting a channel. I bought an RV park and lodge two years ago. You definitely should start a channel. Don't have many projects really. And doubt guests really want to be filmed. Yeah, that that's a hard part about it. Maybe some fishing and bird hunting. That would be good. 
That would be awesome, actually. And Brian is saying Brian spelled with an I. And how are you doing tonight to Ed, he says. And Charles uh, says, my son-in-law uses ghost peppers in his. Those, those ghost peppers, I understand, are pretty, pretty spicy. Uh, Billy says, Rob, that would be interesting to see you and Sarah's move. I agree. And Rob says it was a crazy move at that. Uh, um, Ed is saying to Brian, opposite of my brother, by Brian with a Y, mental note initiated. And we got some salutations going on and some giggling back and forth regarding that. Ed says, um, are you getting heavy winds tonight down there at your place um, over at Alaska Homestead? And uh, they say normal tonight. Uh, it's been howling though. That's how it was here last week. So my thoughts are with you because I know those winds can keep you up all night and also cause some damage too. Ace says, y'all hope you're having a great weekend and all. Uh, y'all, I'm just listening. It's 9.30 p.m. here, 45 or 41 degrees Fahrenheit here in Arkansas right now. Well, it sounds like you're uh, doing just fine there tonight then, Ace. I hope your night is going well for you. Uh, Ed says to Brian, it's good to have a name like Ed with very little variation in the spelling. <laughs> uh, Billy Sutton says that just makes it more interesting uh, to Rob regarding his move. And uh, uh, sorry, Ed said that about his own name. And now Brian is agreeing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Rob is saying we have a few bags left of blueberries. Well, that's good. The, all the blueberries I caught. I, um, harvested was only about a pint. I forgot I had uh, harvested those. I didn't get very many, but it was late in the season. And it, Brian is asking how the weather is, where I'm assuming he's still talking to Ed. The weather here, though, is very mild, very, very mild. And AFJ says uh, to Brian, um, saying hello to you both, you and Diana, and hope that you are well and warm. Ed is saying 80 mile an hour winds right now with mixed rain, snow, and sleet. And um, I shouldn't have read the other spelling of, of Brian because I keep thinking it's Bryron. Uh, but Brian <laughs> says uh, that Diana is in town with her mom. Um, with her mom bit me and the dogs are, but me and the dogs are cozy. Yeah, I was wondering if she was still um, in town with her mom. I was wondering about that because you had mentioned that her mom was going to be in uh, getting some more procedures taken care of and everything. And I know Diana had her whole leg issue going on as well. So I hope you guys are on the mend though, for sure. And cranky Auntie Linda, how are you doing tonight, Linda? Linda says, oh, dear Lord, I nearly slept through this live too. Hello, alone. Hello, Linda. I'm so glad you made it. And you're getting lots of citations here. And there's Ed's channel link for uh, Mountain Mariner Off-Grid Alaska. So be sure to pay Ed a visit. And Billy is saying hi to Linda. And John says, I have a champion 2000 watt generator and it's as quiet as the Honda. Uh, been running it for years now. Well, that's good to know. That's a good long life on that. Lee says, alone, are there cloudberries in Alaska? Love cloudberry jam. Yes, there are cloudberries in Alaska. Um, I don't have any in the area where I live, but I definitely know that they are here. They're a little bit further um, out towards Anchorage and I think further north of where I'm at that you can find cloudberries. And Arlen says, life is better with dogs. I agree. So true. And uh, Alaskan Homestead agrees as well. I'm not even going to try to say Brian too many more times because I'm going to get tongue tied. Uh, Susan says the fire cider saved me with the cold and heavy cough and upper respiratory that I had this week. Yeah. Fire cider is known for being a great elixir for things like that. Um, unfortunately, because of the fact that there's garlic in it, I stay away from the fire cider, but the echinacea uh, tincture that I make it, it does wonders. And one of the other things that I use is um, a thing that I purchase. I don't make it, but um, it is, and I haven't used it in such a long time. I'm not going to remember what it's called. It's called kick-ass immune. And you can also get um, Indian cherry bark syrup. And it's just like the kick-ass. And if I offended anybody with that word, I apologize, but um, good stuff. Just a couple droppers, fulls under the tongue. Let it sit there for 30 seconds. Swallow it down. 
And uh, I do that right when I feel symptoms come on. And then I hardly ever, ever get sick. The only time I've gotten sick and that hasn't really knocked it out right away was when I didn't do it at the first onset of symptoms. And I let the cold stew or whatever for a few days and then tried it and it didn't work quite as effectively. But if you catch it right at the onset, um, it works wonders. Um, Rob says, good Lord, I drink a gallon just in coffee a day, lol. Yeah, I don't drink that much coffee, but I'm also guilty of not drinking enough water also. So uh, Aussie says her iPad is overheating, so better get off of it. Thanks for the great live alone. Take care all. Well, thank you, Aussie, for being here. Greatly appreciate it. And I appreciate I, all of you that are here tonight as well. Um, Rob is saying bye. It, it was good to see you, Aussie. And Alaska cut the cord, PJs and... Um, Billy are saying good night. Lee is laughing at Rob for his coffee drink comment. And there is PJ's Homestead Adventures channel link. So be sure to pay them a visit and say hello. And we got some thank yous and laughing going on. Rob says we're looking forward, for, we're looking for a Hoosier uh, for our place. I know you guys said that you had found one uh, previously um, and that. Uh, Sarah used to have one that she gave to her daughter. So I hope you find one because uh, Hoosiers are a really nice piece of furniture to have in the kitchen for sure. And Ed is saying goodnight to Aussie. And Rob says, as well as a few chairs for the library. That would be good as well. And Yvonne says, hi to Alaska Cut the Cord. And an Alaska Homestead says, I'm off as well. Just wanted to say hi and Merry Christmas. Well, good night, uh, Brian. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. I Glad you are at home with the dog safe. And I hope Diana and her mom are doing well also, like I said earlier. And uh, Jordan says, what are you doing on next weekend? Can you wait for Christmas and New Year's? Hardly, hardly wait. I have some gifts I need to open and show you guys what I got from my friend Carrie Ann and my mom. So, and speaking of mom, this one says, Mom Mai says, generators are so nice to have for those days. We wanted to gussy up to go to town when we lived off grid. Can't imagine living without one in that situation, especially in case of a true emergency. Yeah, even, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm just built different. <laughs> I think that's really what it boils down to. Uh, Ed is saying to Alaska Cut the Cord, that Viper you got is how many CCs? 1,000? And P&J says, alone, you must be so happy. No internet issues. Perfect tonight. Yes, I am very happy. And I'm hoping... Uh, that my image on the screen is coming through clearer tonight too, uh, because the last live, it was very pixelated, very blurry looking. And I found that uh, StreamYard, who I use, has changed some of their settings. And so it had put it out at a lower, um, uh, what is it called? So instead of it being at 1080p, it was at 480p which is part of the reason why it was pixelated. So re lower resolution. So hopefully tonight it looks better than it did on the last one. And Billy says bye to Brian and says Merry Christmas. And Ira is saying hello to John. And Alaska Cut the Cord is saying to Ed, um, 10,058, or I'm sorry, 10,000, 1,058, three cylinders, four stroke, that bad battery issue Put it into limp mode. That's why it didn't sound right. Fixed that with a Yamaha battery. And Ed is saying to Alaska Cut the Cord, Brian, happy, uh, good night and happy new year. Uh, you need a good 2024. That they do. They've definitely had their fair share of injuries and issues this year. So I hope everybody has a happy 2024 indeed for that matter. Linda says, meant to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy new year. Second tier. I agree. Norm says, greenhouse, is that a possibility in your area? It is a possibility in my area um, if I build it correctly so that it can withstand the snow load. Um, I don't think if I build one, I don't think I would do a high tunnel uh, and use plastic on it because I would have to go out there and tend to that plastic or roll it up and take it off in the winter months, um, which would then prevent me from using it early on in the spring. But um, I will probably use Lexan or, you know, rigid plexiglass type panels uh, for a greenhouse and just make sure it has appropriate slope to shed off the snow. But yeah, I, I do think a greenhouse is possible in this area for sure. Uh, Rob says tracks, not racks, lol. Oof, no more 
martinis tonight for Rob. <laughs> Vicky says fourth quarter Broncos 10 Lions 35. Ooh. Uh, PJ says, thank you to Linda. Same to you as well for the holiday wishes. And Rob, or I'm sorry, Billy is laughing at Rob with his martini comment. <clears throat> One more second here, folks. Amy says that she severely enlarged the garden at the lodge, maybe too much, but the black dirt here makes you want to go overboard. The winter squash looked like a jungle. That's how my garden was in Colorado. And I wish again, that I had filmed some stuff back in Colorado um, before I had actually moved here because had I done so that, um, I don't know, I just think that I would have shown a lot more of what I'm capable of and the things that I had done previously. I used to overland and I don't have any videos of me overlanding. I don't have any footage of it. I have like one picture, maybe I think of my car loaded up with everything from a trip I took my kids on. I wish I had documented so much more. And, you know, one other thing that somebody had said to me when my kids were little, they said, you know, one of the best things that you could ever do is to record the voice and the laughter of the people that you love in your life, um, because someday they'll be gone and, and you'll miss that sound. And while my kids are not here and I do talk to my kids, we text way more than we ever talk on the phone. But I have to admit, I miss the sound of my kids' voices. I miss hearing them giggle. Um, I miss hearing my son's boisterous laugh. So, yeah, I wish I documented way more uh, than I did. And my garden being one of those things for sure. And uh, Kermudge is saying, Ooh, we have some turkeys up here, but the featherless kind. <laughs> that is for sure. I think those are everywhere. Uh, hi, Gina. How are you doing tonight? Gina Bradford says, happy holidays alone. Gina from Alabama. Well, thanks for being here tonight, Gina. I appreciate it. And Tim Majors, how are you doing tonight? Uh, Tim is in Kokomo, Indiana in the house. Who's your style? Love listening to all the good info. Slight precipitation there in Indiana with a low of 38 fair for a hike. Yeah, that would be a nice hiking temperature, I think. I like 40 degrees. 48 deg or 40 degrees rather is like the perfect temperature for me. I think that is the most comfortable when you're outside. You don't get too hot. You don't get too cold. I love 40 degrees. Ed says uh, to Alaska cut the cord. What octane do they say to use in that Viper? And Billy says, Gina, Merry Christmas from Prattville, Alabama. And Curry, Amy Curry, rather, is laughing at Rob. And Rob put up a garden like a Vikings channel link. Thank you for doing that, Rob. Greatly appreciate that. I'm going to, I can't click on it from here. I'll have to do it when I go back to watch the live stream afterwards. Uh, but hopefully everyone else will go out and check them out. And Arlen says to Gina, Merry Christmas uh, from Louisiana or yeah, lower Alabama. Sorry, a lol. You knew that was going to trip me up. Uh, Ed says Palmer area has wild turkeys. Oh, that's interesting. I did not realize that there were wild turkeys anywhere in Alaska. And Rob has put up his channel link there. So be sure to check out Rob's channel over the Kermudge Inn. And um, Alaska Cut the Court says you should run 91 octane but they don't in the viper uh and ed says believe it or not and uh, rob is saying i have heard that i've heard that to ed i've got lost in there somewhere i missed something amy says alone if for some reason you don't get a cook stove uh i loved my blaze king king size the wood box is huge ample for 3500 square feet that's what i've heard i've heard lots of people recommend uh the blaze king i know ed has one and he swears by it so maybe someday i will uh you know get my wood stove and if i don't then a blaze king might be what i replace my old osborne with and rob is saying to amy we have a blaze king princess 32 in the cabin and love it amy says they have great adjustability that is good to know and rob says yes they do uh, Rob says the water we get from the spring is amazing. Not hard. No scum lines in my pants. You're lucky. Um, so last year when I was heating water up on my stove, I had um, an enameled water bath canner and I replaced that because it was starting to rust out. Um, I replaced that with an aluminum 
deep fry pot with a spigot on it so I could just pour water directly out of the bottom of the uh, thing. And I love the pan or the pot, whatever, for the spigot that's on it. But I noticed that I get a lot more sediment in that aluminum pot than I ever did in the uh, canner. And I'm not sure if it's a reaction between the water and the aluminum. I also know aluminum is not good for you, but I don't heat that water up for drinking. It's just for doing dishes um, and for bathing in, which again, I know bathing in aluminum water. But uh, when I'm doing the dishes, you know, I'm wearing gloves and what have you. So I'm not too concerned about it, but I do notice that I get a lot more sediment in that aluminum pot than I ever did in the enamel one. And Annette is saying, good night, all. Good night, Annette. Thanks again for being here tonight. Greatly appreciate it. Rebecca says, one question. I know you sew some. Have you ever made quilts or plan on it in the future? Um, I have not made a quilt myself, and I probably will not make a quilt. Um, I like to sew clothing is, is really where my uh, desire to sew is, is in making myself some new skirts and dresses and things like that. But um, I, my sister actually is a quilter and um, my mom used to quilt. My grandparents used to quilt, grandmothers, I should say. Uh, so I have lots of quilts around and, and people that can quilt, but I don't think I would ever do one myself. I just, I don't have the patience to sit through things very long. I'm, I'm a person that's got to get up and move around a lot and do a lot of uh, simple projects because I get distracted way too easily. Hello, Annie. Annie says, hi from Arlington, Texas. First time catching you live. Well, thank you for being here, Annie. I appreciate it. And hopefully you're enjoying the live stream. Ed says, I scrub my Berkey filters with a scotch, scotch bright pad. Exactly. I was going to say uh, that that is what an American homestead does. Cleans them and they will flow well after that. I drink like I drink lake water from my Berkey. Yep. And no issues, right? No issues. So I ha I still have my old Berkey filters. Um, you know, I just let them dry out and then I just put them back in the box because I figure at some point I'm going to need to rely on those. And I have Scotch Bright scrub pads, the green ones. Um, you just want to make sure that, you know, you're not really touching the filters with your bare hands because they say you can introduce bacteria and things like that. But we're pouring lake water and, you know, untreated water in there. So I'm not too concerned about that fact either. Um, but it's always good to know what they recommend. Um, Mom says, alone, I've lived completely off grid and really enjoyed it. The winter was the best. We had lots of snow and so many adventures. I love winter. I really wish I didn't have a broken foot right now because I really want to be out there. Uh, if nothing else, if I can't be out doing winter activities, I'd like to at least be out walking the property right now. And I can't even do that. So uh, hopefully, like I said, though, hopefully the boot comes off in a few weeks and I'll be able to be out there walking on the property with no issues. And P&J is saying hi to Annie and so, along with Rob over at Curmudgeon. He says, welcome to your first live with Alone. And Billy Sutton is also welcoming you. And Annie says, thanks, everyone. Brooke Trout, how are you doing tonight? I hope you are doing well. You've been in my thoughts for sure. Brooke Trout 1 says, hello, Alone, and everybody else from chilly and rainy all day. We need it in Venice. Well, hopefully you're not too close to the storms that everyone was telling me about earlier tonight. And, uh, you know, hopefully you'd stay dry despite all that rain coming your way. And Rob is saying hello to Brooke Trout and saying, hope you are well. And so is P&J's Homestead and Billy Sutton, Alaska Cut the Cord, is also saying great to see you here. And Our Simple Life, how are you guys doing? Angie and David are here from Our Simple Life, formerly uh, Rutherford Roamings. So if you're not familiar with their channel, go over and check them out. And they are also doing a live on Wednesday nights. Uh, so be sure to pay them a visit Wednesday, I believe. If I got the night wrong, please let me know if you're still in the chat. Uh, but yeah, they are doing a live chat as well. So uh, it's always good to pop in and see them when they're doing that. Uh, Alaska Cut the Cord is saying hello. And Brooke Trout says, middle of the week was tough, doing better things. That's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm sure everyone else is as well. Lots of salutations going on. And there is our Simple Life's channel link. So be sure to go over and pay them a visit and tell them hi. And subscribe if you're not already. Rob over at Kmejin says, I use Pow Darko when I get sick. I'm going to have to look into that. I'm not familiar with that. I should be but I don't know what that is. And Lee Betchletcher says, yes, love my red uh, boon coonhound. Red bone 
coonhound. My uh, son, one of my sons, has a red bone coonhound that is mixed with a blue, not a blue healer. It is a blue tick, blue tick dog, I guess, uh, a coonhound. And that dog is the funniest dog I've ever met. He is a hoot. Uh, Norm says, have to go. Everybody stay safe and warm, happy and healthy from Henrico County, Virginia. Well, good night, Norm. Thank you again for being here. It's always a pleasure to see you. And lots of people saying goodbye and to take care. And PJ says, very clear video on screen looks good too. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Billy says, good to hear you're doing better to Brook Trout. And Yvonne Marie says, I need to run. Wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a very happy new year. Alone, wishing you many blessings in the new year. Take care. Thank you, Yvonne. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a happy new year as well. And I hope your new year is very prosperous. Uh, Rob is saying to Amy, what area are you in? And P&J says, thank you to Yvonne and same to you as well. Billy Sutton says, Merry Christmas to Yvonne. We have some good nights going on to everybody. And Yvonne finally says good night as well in response. And Amy says, Rob, Leeds near Devil's Lake in northwestern North Dakota, an hour to the Canadian border and two hours to Minnesota border. There you go. And uh, Rob is saying nice to that. Lee says, I agree alone. Give me the cold temps over the heat any day. And uh, Amy Curry says, I call it the 40, the Fairbanks of the lower 48. Yes, I was going to say, I bet it's freezing there in North Dakota. You guys are probably a lot colder than we are here many days. Susan says, alone, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hope to have another live in January. Bye, everybody in the room. Happy holidays. Good night, Susan. Thanks again for being here and happy holidays to you, too. Uh, Lee says, way too many wild turkeys in Maine. They need to have an open season with no limit on them. That's what they have done here um, in some areas of Alaska with the uh, rabbits. I, there's no limit on them because there's so many rabbits. So, so many rabbits. Uh, P&J says, good night, Susan. Happy holidays. And Billy Sutton says, Merry Christmas to Susan. Ed says to Alaska Cut the Cord, can you run of gas, of gas in the Viper? I've never seen a gas station in Alaska with more than 90 octane. My new snow machine requires 95 octane. Got to check if I can run on off gas. I'm not sure what off gas is either. See how out of it I actually am. Uh, Mountain Mariner says, Ugh, or I'm sorry, Rob says, Ugh to Mountain Mariner. I do not want one of those machines then. And Rob says, Squirrel. <laughs> that is me. That is me totally. I get distracted so easily. Alaska cut the cord is saying to Ed, not sure I will look into that and let you know. Ed says, I'm sure it'll run on 90 octane, but with some loss of horsepower and possibility of detonation issues. Uh, Alaska cut the cord says, even if I could, I don't want to at eight plus dollars per gallon on the off gas, I'm assuming. Rob says to Ed, Alaska, uh, Rob says to Ed, can you use octane booster or are they junk? It says my 2018 summit says to run 93, but I have only used only ever used 90 with no ill effects. Most octane boosters are junk and figured that out as well as uh, Rob said. Rob or Ed says still live. So the Berkey is passing the test so far. There you go. Uh, yes. Blue tick is what Lee is saying. The dog type is. Um, so, yeah, like I said, he is a cute dog. If I can find a picture of my son with his dog, I'll post one on here for everybody because uh, he's my other son that nobody has seen yet. And Ed, or I'm sorry, Adam and Phyllis are saying to Ed, I've never used the Octane Boost additives, but as long as there isn't any pinging, then you'll just lose a little off the top end on the horsepower. Jackets Sprocket says, Merry Christmas, everyone, and good night. Good night, Jackets. Thanks for being here again. I greatly appreciate it. Amy is saying, oops. And meant to say northeastern North Dakota. Billy Sutton says goodnight to Jackets and PJ also. Alaska cut the cord says to Amy, I've fished Devil's Lake ice fishing with a chance of death. There you go. Andrea, how are you doing tonight? Andrea says, Hi from a very warm Western Australia. Give me the cold any day. Well, come to Alaska and you can have all the cold you want. It's cold here almost all year round, it seems like at times. And you're getting lots of hellos. And Big T is saying, on my last bottle of nicotine lozenges, 
uh, Sai, Life Without Tobacco. Well, congratulations on making it this far. And I hope that you can stay tobacco free for sure, Tony. I know you've been working at it for some time now, off and on. And so I'm hoping that this is the one that does it for you. And uh, Rob says, it sucks, Big T. Yes, life without tobacco can be hard for those that have smoked, I'm sure. And Alaska cut the cord is telling me that Avgas is aviation fuel. There you go. Ave gas. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and there is Big T's channel link over at Rustic Log Cabin Life. So be sure to check out Big T and his channel. Vicky says final score for the Broncos was 17 and Lions 42. Uh, boo to the Broncos. Better luck next time. Lee said, uh, I want to thank Rob and Sarah at the Cremage Inn first sharing all of these awesome YouTube channels. I will check them all out. Yes. Thank you very much, Rob, for putting those up. And same with Alaska Cut the Cord. I appreciate you both. You guys are awesome moderators. And there is Alaska Cut the Cord's channel link, in fact, speaking of them. And P&J says hi to Big T over at Rustic Log Cabin Life. And Kurt Stacy, how are you doing tonight? Kurt says, don't worry about that garden. You know what you're doing. You just need to learn your new environment. This is true. This is true. It was definitely a learning curve um, with being in a colder cabin and also having it on the north side of the house. Um, so, you know, it wasn't quite getting as much sun as it probably could have. Um, so thank you for that, Kurt. I appreciate it. And Andrea says, hey, you all lovely people would love to have a cold Christmas. Swap anyone? I don't know if you can get most, well, there are those of us in Alaska who go south to Hawaii and wherever. So maybe someone would swap, but, and um, Amy says, Adam, you mean the jumbo perch, AKA devil's Lake gold didn't make up for the frostbite. Uh, we have some big pike and walleye too. There are pike here. I don't know if there's any walleye in Alaska, but I know there are definitely pike here. And Rob is putting up his channel link there for everybody. So be sure to check out Rob's channel over at Curmudgeon Inn or Curmudge Inn. I do that a lot. I say Curmudgeon Inn. Sorry about that, Rob. Uh, Ed says aviation gasoline. Low. Yep, got it now. Uh, and there is P&J's Homestead Adventures channel link. So be sure to pay a visit to P&J and tell them alone sent you. Vicki says, good night, everyone. Merry Christmas to all. Good night, Vicki. So glad you could join tonight. And Billy says to Lee, you will enjoy them. Uh, Kermudge Inn has put up Ed's channel link over at Mountain Mariner Off Grid. So be sure to check out Ed's channel and see what he's got going on. P&J says thank you to Rob and Sarah and saying good night to Vicky. Rob is saying. Amy says great job moderating, Rob. I agree. You are fantastic. You guys make this so easy on me. Uh, Alaska Cut the Cord says to Amy, it took two days to figure out how to catch the perch, but I did. Caught some nice walleyes as well, but the four foot ice and the 40 mile per hour winds at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit was a, just a little bit much. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be a lot much. Uh, Billy is saying good night to Vicky and very Merry Christmas. Um, Ed is saying it's an acronym. Write it down in your uh, book of acronyms. Yeah, I'll get right on that, Ed. Just add it to all the other ones. Uh, hey, Meadow said, I second that, Andrea. We get your weather a few days here in uh, Adelaide. I'd rather winter any day. Yeah, that's how I am. I like the cold weather. It's part of the reason why I moved here. And Angie and David say, I have to use Octane Boost in my Harley or it pings. There you go, David. And uh, there is Hey Meadows channel link. So be sure to check out Haley, who is in Australia and her sewing channel. She would greatly appreciate that, I'm sure. And Lee says, wow, lions are kicking butt this season. Lol, long time coming. And there is Angie and David's channel link for Our Simple Life. Be sure to pay them a visit. And Alaska Cut the Cord is saying, I've got some Lucas Octane Boost at the shop for you, David. And Hey Meadow says, thanks to Rob and John in Alaska. Are you still here? Rob is asking. Amy says, um... I know, Adam, my second night here, I couldn't even empty my cart at Walmart before freezing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, John in Alaska, there is his channel link for everybody. Um, so be sure to check out John. And uh, 
Hey Meadow says hi to Alaska Cut the Cord. And I think I am actually caught up on comments the way it looks here, which is good timing uh, because I am going to actually uh, close it down here in just a couple of minutes. But I do want to thank everybody who was here tonight chatting in the uh, chat and also everybody uh, who is just viewing and enjoying the live stream. I thank you guys for being here. I want to thank again my moderators uh, tonight, which was Rob over at the Cremudge Inn and also Alaska Cut the Cord. Thank you guys both. I greatly appreciate it. I hope everybody has a happy and safe holiday, whether you're celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever holidays you celebrate, and that you have a very prosperous new year. Thanks again, everybody, for being here. I'm just going to finish out with the last few comments here, and then I'll let you guys go back for your night. Uh, John says, just had company and they just left. Well, that was nice, John. I hope you had a pleasant time with them and it was a good visit. And good night, Big T. I hope you have a good night as well. And Rob is saying to give some thumbs up, folks. Thank you for that, Rob. Greatly appreciate it. Good night, Kurt Stacy. Good night, Bryron. Have a good night and a great Christmas to you as well. And Ace says, alone. I'm alone too, mostly 23 hours a day. It's rough at holiday times, although our memories are fantastic. Have a fantastic holiday and love you. Love you too, Ace. And my thoughts are there with you and everybody else this holiday. And if you are alone, just know you're not really alone because we're all celebrating with you, just not in the same room. Brooke Trout says, good night all and have a good week. Good night, Brooke Trout. Good night, sourdough. Nice. All caught up. Amazing work. Happy Christmas to you too. And Alaska Cut the Cord says, you should get an award alone. I've never seen you caught up on comments. Great job tonight. Yeah, I'll be curious when I look at analytics to see how many consecutive or how many comments there were uh, tonight. Usually it's a couple hundred, sometimes four or five hundred. So we'll see. <laughs> P&J, good to see you. Uh, great to see you alone and take care. Thank you, P&J. I greatly appreciate that. AK Homegrown Roots. Good to see you here tonight and Merry Christmas to all they say. Merry Christmas to you as well. And I hope you have a happy holiday. Lee says, thank you alone. It's always fun, relaxing time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Rob says, have an amazing night, everyone. It was a blast as always. Yes, it was. Thank you. Hey Meadow says, thanks alone and mods. Have a Merry Christmas and all the best for 2024. Amy says, wishing you all a warm holiday season. Good night. Billy Sutton, good night. Alone and everyone, Merry Christmas. Blessings to all from our simple life. P and J says good night, all. Lee says good night, everyone. El Arlen says good night, all. Peace and blessings. Colorado Pack Rat Prepper, Merry Christmas, all. Cranky Auntie Linda says nighty night. And Cremudgeon says, Hey, Colorado Pack Rat Prepper. And Colorado Pack Rat Prepper says, Howdy, Cremudge. Good night, everyone. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Please stay safe out there. Until next time.